now guys now let me go and discuss about what is a angular okay before you using the angular you must have to know that what is a web application then only we can able to know what is the importance of a angular application okay let me go and draw something for you then only we will be able to understand the use of our angular application okay let me draw something you can see that i have opened my paint and in this paint i want to draw something and you have to understand the basic functionality of a web because when we are developing an application that application is going to run on the browser because suppose you are accessing facebook you are accessing instagram you are accessing google twitter everything you are accessing you are accessing via the browser right now browser is our main entry point for the application that will go later what is the use of browser how browser execute lot of thing going to discuss but just let us understand and understand a basic web application fundamental if you know the basic web application fundamental then only we know that the importance of a ui importance of a api and importance of a database we learn lot of things now let's go understand case one get on one scenario suppose we are developing one application and that application going to run on the browser let's understand how the application should looks like okay now understand in the real world I mean suppose you are developing any application let me develop any application it may be mobile application it may be browser application it may be tv application tv means suppose you are running an application that should be run on your android tv or any tv if you see all the application in this world the application basically contain three layers three layers means three different different components should contain using that component we are going to develop any application first let's go understand that layer then we'll come back to our ui part okay now let's go and understand the basic part now if you want to develop any application the all the application must contain these three component okay let me draw the component this is a component one and this is a component two and this is a component three and i'll go and explain one by one component in depth then only you will understand the importance of all the layer okay suppose you all are users right suppose you all are users and you are using the instagram application or facebook application now you know that you accessing this facebook or instagram or youtube you have different 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 medium right what are these medium you can access suppose we are accessing facebook.com site okay you are accessing the facebook per second you have multiple different different platform to access right one is mobile you can access by mobile right you can also access by your browser okay you can access by your tablet or nowadays also facebook giving you can access by your tv because facebook watch is application using that application you can access the facebook on your tv screen also right now you can see that accessing accessing the facebook site you have different 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 medium right it may be mobile it may be your browser it may be your tablet it may be tv same way if you see the different different applications suppose let me example another application instagram also you can able to access the instagram using mobile browser and tablet what i'm saying why we are talking all these things the reason is suppose if you're going to access any application you require a interface right it may be mobile interface it may be your browser interface it may be your tablet interface or it may be tv interface anything you want to access all the things you can access using different different interface and thing is this interface guys interface means it's a screen it will be a mobile screen browser screen tablet screen any screen this interface is known as a screen that is the entry point of our application means without mobile suppose facebook develop an application and you people don't have no how to access that one you don't have any mobile screen you don't have any browser how are you going to access that right then the screen or the interface is the first entry point of your application means to access any application in this world you required a interface that interface may be anything in any platform in any different different component different different like system but 
you require interface guys that interface is called user interface or user or called ui got it first understand the concept of ui then only we will understand the other part understand because interface means always remember interface is on a no screen on a screen also technical term which is a normal term screen it may be a mobile screen browser screen tablet screen tv screen because why it's called user interface user screen because we are the user who are using the application right that the reason this is called the user interface or ui got it now this is the first entry point for the application this is the first one okay this is the first one you must have to know that for entering any application any application in this world first we require the first point that is called the interface that is called the screen let's understand screen now you are able to see my screen my screen is this paint paint is a screen anything able to interact anything you able to see or behave that is called the user, user interface got it now this part is the first entry point of the application now ui is the first entry point now let's go to second component i hope you able to understand the importance of the ui ui is the screen where we are going to access the application right now let's go to the next part next one is the red one i am calling as this is this is a server or we can call as server or people are calling as api now let's go understand what is this use of server and api now let's go back to the interface and understand what a interface can do okay then what a server can do let's understand guys just example of facebook okay and suppose you are uploading your birthday pic or you upload any, any update now whoever are using the facebook and who are using who are your friend they can able to see your photos right now just understand another scenario like suppose you are using the facebook application on your mobile now suppose you upload an application upload a photo and upload anything and same data is going to display to different 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 user example suppose suppose this is your photo okay this is your photo and after you upload this same photo can be accessed by multiple user right multiple user means that can be displayed by different 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 user or different different friends of you now just imagine how this data data from your mobile application this photo can be accessed in different different on the photo this photo can be uploaded in different 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 system or different different friends how your friends able to see the same photo from your mobile in that device let's go and understand this part because when you upload any photo in on in your screen or your mobile now that is belongs to you now how this photo can be seen by different different different, different user now guys in that case we required a centralized data we required something that should be get your data and display to different 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 user now, that is the use of a server because the photo whatever you have uploaded that photo is belongs to your mobile but that data if you are going to distribute to different different user and give the data to different different person then you required a server because ui only get the data and set the data means display the data and send the request then server is the person server is a component which is used to distribute the data now for data distribution data part we are going to use the server but in this our today's session we are not going to focus on the server and other component our main component is our ui part but as a developer you must have to know that these three components now let's go to the server one what i'm saying that ui is not going to store the data ui part is only display the data and send the data okay to where to display the data to different 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 user we require a server or we require a api just example 
giving another example suppose now you have the username password for the facebook right and same time you are using the username password in different different device suppose you have a mobile you have a browser suppose same username password if you are going to use mobile or browser you can able to log in means that means that username and password is stored somewhere using that store if you entering from mobile or browser you can able to access means that accessibility all this thing is happening on the server side this api side means api side is going to communication between the ui and the api right now we'll back here again let's go to the third component is called database because as I told, API work is only for receive the data and send the data. But the data storage capacity is going to be need in the database. Okay. And this database may be anything because database is used to store the data. And as of now in the market, we have two types of data database, right? One is SQL, right? Another one is no SQL. Right? And SQL you know that in your uh, academic you know that this is called the rbms relational database management system it may be suppose uh, oracle and suppose microsoft sql and postgres uh, mysql etc this is called the sql or this is called the rbms relational database management system but nowadays you can see that there is another database is in the market is called the no sql which is doesn't contain any relationship between the data that is the example is mongodb okay. and another suppose cassandra cosmos db lot of thing you can see as n number of uh, database is available in the market for the different 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 database we are not going to focus all these things but you have to know that as a developer you have to know that database there is two type of database one is sql another is no sql sql rdms no sql like this is all about our uh, known uh, key value pair database okay now as i told database is used to store the data api is used to communication between your ui to database means when you want to store some data you cannot store the data direct from ui to database you require a interface, you require a medium which is going to store your UI data to the database via the API. Means UI is going to send the data to the server. Server is going to send data to database. Again, database is going to respond the data to the API and API is going to send data to the UI. This is guys called the basic web app principle, right? And sending up a data from UI to API this called as a request okay is called request and getting the data from server to ui is called response okay this is a basic principle don't think about all these things we are going to focus on the ui part but as a developer you must have to know this this part okay now let's go to a little bit more ahead now as i told to develop any application in this world we require this basic three component okay what are the component the first component is UI, second component is server or API, and third component is our database. Okay. These are the three is mostly required to develop any application. Okay. Now, this developing this application, so server side application, you can use either Java Spring Boot. Okay. You can use Java Spring Boot, or you can use the .NET Core. You can use the PSP, you can use the uh, suppose Node.js. There are n, n different, 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 different uh, like framework available to develop the API side application. Okay, and there are different databases available to develop this database application. Now, let's understand what are the things you must have to know to develop any application. Let me tell you to develop any application guys application means it's not only ui you have to consider all these three things okay these three things or these three component in technically we call as a stack okay. stack 
what is stack now this is called the ui stack this is called the api stack this is called the database stack suppose you are a developer if you know ui if you know this api if you know the database then you are called as a full stack developer means you have to know you have to know ui an api then database understand this part this is if you are because nowadays in every market people have to know that that you are a full stack because full stack developer now much more demand in the market because as a developer you have to develop the ui part you have to develop the api part you have to develop the database part and suppose you are a developer you only know the this ui part then it is called the ui developer your developer is going to only focus on this ui same as suppose if you know only the api part then it's called a backend developer backend or api developer same way if you only focus on the database it's called the database developer okay it's called a database developer but if you know all these three things all these three stacks is called the full stack developer okay now guys as you know you already people know that in the market as more demand of full stack developer you must have to know ui api and database but it doesn't matter that if you know only one stack you are not getting job because nowadays some company lot of company are using focusing on one 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 stack if a database developer you can only going to work on database if you know the java or if you know dot net core any backend language then you are going to as an api developer or backend language if you know uh, angular react or Vue, you are going to be as a ui developer but i am suggesting as a op, like in future you must have a full stack developer now let's go and understand if a full stack developer what are the different 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 components also available there what language is going to prefer now guys suppose you know uh, html css and you know java and you know database anything this is also a full stack developer but nowadays in market full stack developer also dividing into multiple parts let me understand what is multiple part now let me expand this one now full stack developer as i told if you know ui api database is called as a full stack but again this full stack also divided into multiple parts what are the multiple parts is called mean stack developer okay, this is called mean stack developer mean stack another called the mon stack okay mon stack now understand what is this mean what is this mon i hope you, you people already learn all these things right you, you uh, like heard this name what is mean and what is mon okay now mon means it's called mongodb mongo angular okay mongo m stands for uh, mongo e stands for express and a stands for angular n stands for node same way guys let's understand the mon stack is sent as mongo as called express instead of uh, angular you are going to use react and you are going to use node now understand what i am saying mean and mon what is the mean and mon guys you can see that this is also the same as the full stack developer the only difference is in full stack developer means if you know these three different different stack if you know ui api and database this is called full stack developer here no language constraint means if you know java you are also full stack if you know dot net also you are full stack if you know node.js also you are full stack same as if you know sql no sql also you are a full stack developer in the ui if you know the angular react or view you also a full stack developer means as a developer you must have to know these three different different layer but same time another Full stack developer also they are saying you have to use the javascript family understand what is javascript family they are saying means just example suppose in ui you are using angular now you are using in javascript then the back end you are using java or dot net in java you have to learn java and for dot net you have to learn c sharp in the back end you have to use sql 
suppose you are using oracle i can see that for different different structure you are using different 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 language but what here i am saying to use the mean stack or mon stack in this case we are going to only focus the javascript means javascript is the language using this language you are going to develop the entire application means mongo is stands for mongodb application mongodb is same as your json this is not, we are going to discuss later what is a mongodb means the database we are going going to use as a mongodb express express is the node js framework using that we are going to develop the api angular we are going to use the developing the ui node js is the framework top of that we are going to build all these things all this mongodb express angular node or mongo express this react and node all are going to code using the javascript means if you learn javascript then you can able to develop all this three layer application using the javascript only which no need to learn no need to learn c sharp no need to learn java no need to learn php nothing you learn if you learn only javascript then you can do the all the three layers application right means javascript is the only language if you going to learn that language is can be done by different different layer just imagine in your college days in college days you are going to learn java or c++ or .net for the backend language again you will come to the ui you going to learn the html css or you going to learn jquery lot of thing database you are going to learn sql or this oracle right instead of learning different different language for the developing the application if you learn only language called javascript then using the javascript you can develop all these three layer of application now guys in the market the boom is full stack but in full stack also companies are looking into this two part min stack or mon stack guys there is no difference between angular and react both are doing the same work that we going to discuss uh, in the next uh, time i'm going to discuss about what a difference between angular and react that is different part but you have to understand as a full stack developer you have to focus which technology you are going to use full stack is all about different different layer ui api and database inside the full stack there is a technology also you have to use that technology is mongo express angular and node okay and all this developing these things you require javascript if you learn javascript then you can develop any uh, stack application it can be ui api or database okay now in today's session we are going to focusing only on the ui part then ui we're going to discuss what is a ui how to use the ui the importance of a ui and why we are going to use the angular got it okay because we did not start as of now all these things this api part database part we are not going to focus we are going to focus on the ui part developing the ui as i told you are going to use angular now let's go and understand the how this why this angular is required before angular all this react or view what are the different different things are there and we'll uh, we'll see what is the benefits of using this angular and react okay now got it now let's go to the next picture we'll discuss about the ui layer and importance of this angular and other components okay now now guys let's understand the part that is i'm calling, calling as ui you know ui is called as user interface okay and user interface is the screen let me open a website okay let me open a website now you will understand how your website looks like okay let me open you know opening any website you require a browser because browser is the screen using that the browser you can able to access any website right and any browser contain a url like the address bar where you can go and enter any of the url and that url is going to give you data just example i am opening flipkart as example I'm opening flipkart just imagine have you ever imagine how these things looks like i know that some people know that this is a flipkart site this is an e-commerce site and develop the e-commerce site you require such a technology but let, let's go and understand the different component of a website 
you can see that when i am opening a website but my first requirement meant is i require a browser right without browser how can go access the flipkart i am not talking about the mobile screen now as of now just ignore the mobile and other device just focus on this browser okay guys in this browser when i am opening this site okay the my first requirement is i need a browser means browser is my entry point for this application to opening any of the website you have opening any of the website application then you first requirement is you require a browser right now the question is which browser because nowadays we have a n number of browsers available we have chrome firefox edge um, opera lot of browser you can take any browser that doesn't matter it's belong to any browser you can take any browser okay now then browser means browser is going to display the data right browser is going to display the data means we have to understand the first the working principle of a browser then only we can develop the application and that application is going to see the data means suppose you are developing an application and that application is not supported by your browser then what will do right the first thing is you have to first understand a browser guys understanding a browser we are not going to understand the code we have to understand what browser able to understand just example suppose all of you are now here if i am going to talk you in english if you will understand suppose if i going to understand if i going to speak in different language in chinese or japanese or any different language you may or may not able to understand means as a person if you know english then you can able to understand the english language suppose you know telugu or hindi you can able to understand that language the same way when we are opening a browser then browser contain its own language right and using that language only we can communicate using the browser now let's understand the question what is a browser language now it is a new thing we are learning right you know that programming language now what is a browser language because browser only able to understand that specified language whatever the browser knows if you browser don't know that language whatever going to write the code browser not going to able to understand right the same way guys to, to develop any application okay to develop any application using the browser we must have to know the three thing that is called html css and javascript now let's go and understand one one different language description and use of this language now guys what i told to develop any application in the browser we required below these three language one is html css and javascript because if you know that dot, suppose you know java you know dot net you know any language does not matter browser only understand this html css and javascript if you know html css and javascript then only you can develop this application any web application means you can see i have opened flipkart site here but this flipkart site is displaying a data using only these three different different language means browser only able to understand this three programming language it does not able to understand what is angular what is react what is view what is typescript nothing able to understand by browser browser only understand these three language now let's go understand one by one language use and what is the use of this language and how we can go to implement that language using our application okay now guys all of you i know that you know html right html stands for hypertext markup language which is a special tag is used to design the site okay what is the use of html i am saying that html is for the design design the web page now understand what is the meaning of a design i know that you already people know that designing the website from because we are all are from the uh, already using that one but let me understand that programming uh, like point what is the html use for i just look into this part website you can see that in this side you can see lot of images and these are the images and this is a text box 
this is a button this is a like you can call as a logo also you can see it's a link right this is a link and you can see a lot of images here now things is how we can display all these things means how to display image how to display text box how to display a button how to display a link how can this display looks like that how to display all this content uh, like all this uh, data inside a website that is only the help of our html guys html is used to design the web page okay means to adding a image adding a text box adding a button or adding a link into your web, web page or web application you require the html means html is used for to design the site or you all know that html tag is suppose uh, you want to add a um, uh, paragraph then you, you are going to use the paragraph tag right and whatever you're going to add inside this this is called the content i hope you people know that when adding this is a this is the markup language right the tag start tag end and the content right and as i told html is used for design the page now let's go for the css what is the use of css because if you know all these things then only you will able to understand the importance of a ui then how the ui is going to using the angular okay now let's go for the css now guys as i told html is only used for design the page means adding a button adding a color adding a text box adding a images lot of thing is going to happen using the html but can I look into the site? This side you can see that uh, suppose this deal of the day, you can see that in deal of the day the text is little bit more, right? This is the big size text. Same as you can see that the timer is here, right? The timer is gray color and little bit um, small font. Same as if you see there, you can see here the color is here blue. Background color is blue all this coloring and styling you can only achieve using the css and you know the css full form is cascading style sheet html is used to design the web page whereas css is used to style the web page what is the styling guys style are the color okay color and for font size lot of things we can do using the css okay these two html and css is purely for designing okay how i am using this paint how i am using this paint i am drawing and doing all this paint screen same as guys using the html and css you can paint the content you can display the content you can style the content right means html css is totally for the designing the page right but let's go for the javascript i hope you will be able to understand the importance of html css because this is the entry point if you don't design what are you going to show that in html and css is a basic requirement for designing the web page now let's go for javascript what is the use of javascript now you will ask me a question okay using the html css i am developing the application the you what is the use of javascript let me show you some example if you go to flipkart site you know that we have a login button here right if you click on the login you can see that we are displaying some modal or pop-up is displaying and it's asking your text box to login is asking enter your mobile number email mobile number or enter your password once i click on the login you can see that it's throwing me an error okay it's throwing me an error now guys how we can do this part okay designing everything we are using css and html that is fine after the designing when you click on the button then what will happen i am if i don't enter any data here it's going to show me an error please enter a valid email id and mobile number now let's go and understand how this thing is working okay guys this thing is working because we have javascript javascript is the programming language for a browser okay. means to do any kind of programming if you do any kind of a like logical check inside an application then you can use the javascript what is logical check here means if i click on the login means i am doing some login function calling the login function and login function going to check 
that this text box is a value is blank or not if blank then show the message just just imagine that way suppose you are writing a function inside a c or c plus for any language whatever you know and in that language if you want to check the value is exist or not you what are you going to type you are going to type this way right if the value uh, equal to equal to null or equal to equal to blank what i'll do simple right then here you are writing your code guys this logic this kind of programming you cannot do using the html css because html and css is only for design to adding some dynamic features for this html and css you have to use the javascript language right then javascript language is used to do some dynamic operation or some adding some validation to the programming this kind of code this kind of logic you can able to handle using the javascript and css the, sorry using the javascript sorry the javascript javascript is the programming language for the browser now you will able to understand the use of html css and javascript html let me repeat html css is only for designing no logic no dynamic content nothing but to manipulate the html and css we can use the javascript now javascript is the actual the logical programming for the browser got it now now you will ask me question okay i know suppose as a person all of you know html css javascript okay i know html css javascript then why i need to learn angular okay now the question is there if as a person if you know html css javascript then why i need to learn angular why need to learn different different ui Different, different stuff. Now, guys, let us understand the importance of a application. Suppose, let me go and navigate to this application. You can see that, guys. If I click on this, suppose mobile. Suppose, let me uh, click on the mobile. Okay. Now you can see that. And if I going to click on the electronics, I click on the any mobile. Okay. Let me click on Samsung mobile. Guys, just look into this site. How you can see that? my header is there my menu also there i am able to see the content right same way if i go and click on mi you can see that i can able to see the content right hand side some filterage left hand side look into this part okay simple look into this part and if i click on any of the filter now it's going to uh, filter the data this is pretty much about the any any e-commerce site right now guys you can see that in this application if i close this one okay now you can see that my header and this one is remain there right and if i go to click on here my header also remain there if i click on mobile my header also remain there means every time i if i going from one page to another page you can see that my application is not reloading i will be there only right let me go and give an example of suppose our synotech site this is a note site now suppose i am going to click on about if we click on about you can see that my entire page is reloading you can see that a small flash is coming and then only i can able to see the content you can click on home you can see that again entire page got blank then it's loading the data now you will see that these two sites are doing their work means this note site is going to display the content here also is displaying the content forget about, forget about the uh, the like be, like different different use of this thing because flipkart is e-commerce site and this is just a site but as a developer we have to first understand what is the basic difference between these two as a implementation it may be e-commerce it may be normal site but understand the basic way what is difference Guys, in Synotex site, if I go and click on any link, you can see that my entire content is loading again. Again means my entire things is loading again and again. Means example, this header and this 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 menu part and this sorry, this header part and this menu part, you can see for all the pages for all the pages this is common. But what I'm doing? for each and every clicking each and every page i am reloading the entire things okay just remember this thing let me go to this this one now guys 
you can imagine this two two part here right this is the header this is the menu same as this is our header this is the menu okay let's imagine this way because it's not not look exactly but you can imagine this two way guys just understand this part this is the origin of an angular or understand why this angular required in this two set because i am going to compare between the in depth of this two set now here you can see that if you compare these two side we have a header we have a header we have a menu we have a menu right now let's go and click on any of the menu suppose i'm going to click a new batch you can see that i'm going to display the data in this case if i click navigating one page to another page my entire page is getting blank and then reload but if i go to this page and click on the suppose mi you can see that this one is remain there is not reloading only this content is reloading you can see that only this content is reloading same way if i go and apply the filter you can see that my everything is there as it is only this part is reloading means guys you can see the difference if you compare between these two side you can see that in these two side they are doing their work but the only difference is in this page if i going from one link to another link my entire page is reloading again that is okay but the difference is here my header and this menu is common for all the page suppose if i go to about also if i go to new batches also my, this header is common but same way if i go to this site also this header is common for uh, mi also this is header for common for the samsung also but the thing is if i go and click in any other links that time my header is not reloading again okay but in this case it's reloading again and again now guys this is the origin of a single page application now you will ask me a question what is single page application let give me an another example if i go to this page i know that my only this part this part is dynamic and these two are static for all the page mean these two are common for all the page just imagine the another way if i go and click this home now what will happen it will go to the server and get this header and this menu and load this page right same way if i go here if i click on any of the things you can see that only this content is getting updated but the header and menu is as remain as is there it's not going to update anyhow now let's understand the uh, like what is the you if i go to develop this kind of application you know, what is the use of this suppose it is constant right every time it is constant now what is the benefit of using this one now, what is the benefit of using this one now let's understand this part i know that for my all the pages my header I mean this part and my footer is always constant but if i go to any link it's going to reload the page again and again in this case guys what happening in our site i unnecessary loading this header and footer for all the times just understand i'm loading this header and the footer all the times when navigating from one page to another page now you will ask me a question what is the what is challenges in that if i loading the page what is the challenging of that let's understand the part suppose you are developing an application and your menu this menu is coming dynamically dynamically mean guys so based on the user is learning is coming dynamically just just like this one you can see that how much menu is this content lot of items right now let's understand to get this data from the api or from the ui from the database we require some logic right write some logic to get all the but you have electronics table electronics uh, data inside that you have mobile mobile accessories lot of things are there same as the tv plans you have all the data means somewhere in the database all data is stored and using the api or server we're going to access the data guys when you send the data from ui to api what is required it's required your what is required is required a bandwidth right it's required a network it's required a bandwidth you need to process onto your server and get the data from the server 
lot of thing happening using this calling suppose get accessing any data to the server we require lot of thing what are the lot of thing you can see here as i told earlier to access any data we require this three layer right we have ui api and database means every time you have to access something then you want to send the data to the request and api is going to process it and get from database again database is going to respond to data then you and api is going to hold the data and send to the ui every time you want to access a data this three life cycle is happening one is sending to api api going to send database database is going to response back again means this process is happening for every time you are going to send one request you know that each and every stack or each and every layer is a different different computer right suppose ui you are using own computer server is using your server computer and database also using the database computer means everything is using different different computer and each and every computer or machine is using their own memory suppose your server is 8 gb it's going to use 8 gb memory and when you send the data it's going to process the data lot of things happening in between that for each and every data response we are consuming the server resource we are consuming server uh, memory lot of things we are consuming right guys why i am discussing all these things means when i am going to send sorry when i am going to send any request just a second guys when i am going to send any request to the server a server also getting some cost cost means it's a memory cost it's maybe operation cost lot of cost is going to happen but i know that this data is common for all the pages now let's load all this data once and when it's going to navigate from one page to another page no need to load in this case what the benefits is like that in this case we are not getting all this data we are not sending the request all the time when i'm doing some operation right when I'm doing some operation, that time I'm not reloading the entire page, only loading those content which is required. Same way, in this Synotex site, every time if I click on the any of the link, my entire page is reloading again and again. In this case, every time I know that this header is common, but I unnecessarily loading all the content all the time. If you compare between this Synotex and this this flip, flip card side i can say that this flip card is a single page application and this this synotech is a traditional web application now let's understand what is a single page application what is a traditional application guys as i told like single page means single page means you have only one page okay likes we have only one page header is constant menu is constant now if i go and do anything my this after loading all the page only this content getting updated not the entire page means in single page we have one page and multiple content in case of traditional traditional application it's a multi page what is multi page means every time if you click you will get the same page again and again if i click home i will get the entire page but in case of a single page application we have only one page and we have a multiple content what is multiple content i can go load one page inside that if i click on the filter then what is going to happen it's going to only load this content that time it's not loading the entire page got it now guys this is the origin of the angular now angular is used to develop single page application right? now angular is used to develop single page application now if you compare don't go for in depth if you see the compare between these two sides you can able to know that in this case what we are achieving in this flip card we are loading the page but only we are loading those content which is required not loading entire content but in case of synotex site you can see that in this case we know that our header and footer is common for all the pages but 
unnecessary we are loading all the content every time we are going to from one page to another page now guys that is the use of the single page application and a traditional application now let's before going to start into angular part let's understand what is the benefit of a single page application or short form spa now you nowadays you already know that all are saying that is spa spa is stands for single page application now let's understand the single page application advantages what are the benefit of that as i told earlier if i going to send any data or receiving any data i need to follow this three process every time okay now guys understand in this site sorry in this site you can know that every time if i go and click if i going to load the entire page just imagine how many content content is inside the menu right in this case again it's going to process the data and get all the data right once you load you will get only one call but if you go and call multiple times it's going to multiple times server are going to call that one right in this case what will happen it's going to consume the more server resource resource and spa is going to reduce reduce the server resource understand the first thing is spa is going to reduce the server resource second thing is second thing is hold the data in memory what is hold data memory just imagine this part once i load this menu okay i'm sure load, load this menu now i have this data now this data i can access anywhere inside the page because this data is now my common data that's the reason we can hold the data in memory or we can reuse got it now next part guys this is for the server side and this is for the client side or is the ui side the understand benefit then only going to understand means reduce the server resources means it's not going to use the server more more memory because already get the data we are going to use that one second one is hold the data in memory that is not going to be we can reuse the data third part is use less data data means suppose bandwidth of client machine understand loading this menu for each and every time also going to call the menu it will take more memory of your browser suppose you are using a mobile network or you are using the suppose uh, connect uh, suppose your data network then it's going to use less network because once you load the data we are not going to load the same data again and again means it's not going to communicate with your api multiple time it's only call the api one time once you get the data it's not not going to load the api again and again in this case guys what will happen it's going to use less bandwidth of your machine okay this is this is your ui side and fourth is mobile friendly mobile friendly can you understand okay hold the data in memory second point okay someone asked to explain the second point let me understand this part explain this part hold data in memory reuse the data let's understand guys suppose you are loading this suppose first time when page the load the page i able to get all the menus okay now suppose this menu i want to display here okay maybe not fully menu i want to display all the electronics menu not tv appliance i want to display all the electronics categories here now guys in this case what will do again you will go to the server get this menu and suppose for example here you want to apply the filter of this electronics again now what will do you again you will go to the server and get this electronics data and display here but the second point as i told hold the data in memory means already we got the data here now 
we can reuse this data inside here without going to the server because already the data is loaded and that data inside our memory right and that data we can use inside our application okay same way suppose i want to access all the electronic data and display here no need to go to the server and load the same data already the data is loaded and this data we can use inside our application that's the reason i'm saying whole data in memory or we can reuse the data clear right that is the use of reuse already you have a data same data you can reuse anywhere that is the use of the in memory data Second one, less bandwidth because suppose you are calling the same data multiple times, then it's going to consume your bandwidth, your network bandwidth. That's the reason it's used less bandwidth. Finally, one is mobile friendly. What is mobile friendly? Guys, nowadays you know that everyone developing application for mobile first. You are also developing the browser as well as mobile friendly. But you know that mobile is content own limitation mobile content less memory like less mobile data bandwidth lot of things there right then this spa is actually focusing on the mobile friendly application because you know that mobile will have less bandwidth and less memory in that case what we'll do we are not going to load the entire page again once you load the page only load those content whatever is required and also we are going to use a less bandwidth also we can going to reuse the data these are the basic use of a SPA. Developing the SPA, we require, we requ means the use of SPA are these. These are the benefits of using the SPA. But let's go understand what is the disadvantages of a SPA. What is, these are the basic things because guys, it's not doing anything. It's just reducing the server resources, hold the data like using less bandwidth, mobile friendly, these are the basic example, these are the benefits of SPA. So what is the disadvantages of SPA? The disadvantages is, it is complicated. Now what is complicated? Now guys understand. <clears throat> As I told here, single page application means one page multiple content. To, to, to develop this one page multiple content, HTML CSS JavaScript is not enough. We cannot using the JavaScript HTML. We cannot directly develop this SPA, but we can develop. But developing that thing is require much more time. For that reason, what we need to do? We need to learn a different technology to do the SPA. Okay, a different technology that may be Angular, that may be React, or that may be Vue. Using these three different different technology or you can say language or framework library, we can able to develop the SPA. You already know that the benefit of SPA, but developing the SPA, we require to learn new language for that. And that language is today going to focus on the Angular. Means Angular is giving us a, what is Angular? Angular is a UI framework which is used to develop single page application a short form spa to know to develop this spa we require the angular guys same as you can use the react same as you can use the view there is no difference all our motto is developing the single page application got it means Angular is a technology, it's a framework which is used to develop a single page application. To do all these things, we have to learn the Angular. But the thing is, background is HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Everything is there, but we are not using everything directly. We are using via Angular. Means using the Angular, we can develop the same web page application, but the web page application is SPA single page application or this is called the one page application now let's go understand how to set up a angular how to write a code how to develop a single page application okay clear all now let's go start with the angular part 
yeah means it store the yes not in yeah yeah it's a cache memory you can store the data someone asked me a question like when i develop this hold the data in the memory line number two they're saying that where you store the data yes we are going to store the data in the browser memory that is called the cache memory and that is going to access using different technology you, you can store local storage you can use to store the in memory storage you can do different different storage to store the data for this hold in the memory guys hold in the memory means you don't think about that way just imagine that i have loaded this data once and use this data again and again when it's required obviously when i load this data i have to store inside somewhere that somewhere is the memory which memory the browser memory the browser also contain different different memory memory stack that we're going to discuss a little bit later how we can go to use the memory memory browser memory lot of thing we want to discuss when going to implement inside a project okay now guys first we'll go and understand this angular part now what is angular what is the use of angular we already discussed angular is used to develop the single page application and what is the benefit of single page application you already know that right now let's go and install a single page application let me install the angular application set up the environment and create one small angular application then only we'll go and know the use we are going to implement we are going to create one project and that project is going to cover all this topic now i can you can know that we have completed this introduction okay introduction we have discussed what is angular use of angular what is the web application and difference between the single page application csp and traditional web application right and let's go to second part we'll understand setup because you know that developing any application we require a setup right then we'll understand what is the use of node how to install a angular and we'll go and discuss about the creating a fast angular application and then we're going to create a angular project and that project is going to cover all these things okay now let's go and complete the setup pass first guys understand the setup is the most important part of any language suppose you are developing any language it may be c c plus plus or java or dot net anything you know that that uh, installing installation part is most important right now suppose you are developing the java application or the dot net application so java application you have to must install the jdk right or the dot net you have to install the dot net framework inside your memory the same way to develop any angular application we must have to install the node.js now you will ask me a question that node.js i have to learn to learn the angular the answer is no node.js is just a runtime what is runtime you guys know that so runtime means dot net framework is a runtime and java also uh, java also giving a runtime which is going to run and execute our application same way to develop any angular application we must have to first install the node.js node.js is giving us a runtime in top of that we are going to create our java we are going to create our angular application the first thing is we have to go and install the angular uh, using the node.js going to install the angular now guys let's go to the official site of angular we'll see how what are they are saying to installation let me go for angular.io angular.io is the official site of angular okay now if you scroll, if you go to this docs click on the docs and click on the uh, introduction if you go scroll down you can see that set up your environment okay which is set up your environment if you click on set up your environment then you can see that we have a landed page here it's saying set up in local it's local setup set if you scroll down you can see that they're saying that prerequisite as i told earlier to develop any like angular application we require html css and javascript guys they are saying that to use angular framework you should be familiar with this following javascript html and css but they are saying that knowledge of typescript okay i know that if people know maybe know maybe don't know typescript but we are going to cover the basic typescript in this workshop okay now you already got it to know to start with this angular you must have to know these three language 
that is okay if you don't know that is fine but i i, I expect you people should know the html css javascript that is fine i'm going to learn it now but typescript also going to cover these are the basic things now to install angular on a local system you need followings they are saying that what are the basic requirement for installing the angular to write the program we require this language but to install the angular we require these things they are saying we require node.js because they are saying that the node.js is the platform using that we are going to develop the angular application this is just a runtime there is no link of any node.js syntax with our angular but it's just a it's just a platform then only they are saying that npm package manager we require the npm package manager to package the data now we'll you will tell me what is npm package manager guys you know that if you know the packages suppose you are using java you are using marvin and suppose you are using dotnet you are using the nougat package manager you know that all the package manage packages are going to store in a package manager i'll go and discuss all these things later but understand this npm is the package manager which is store all the package all the library of angular okay before going to npm let's go and install the node.js once you install Node.js, then we'll go and discuss about the NPM. Guys, to install the Node.js, let's go and type in the browser Node.js.org. Okay, if you see Node.js.org, this is the Node.js official site. Every time you open the Node.js Node site, you can see that you have two active, two linkages here. One is 16.16.0, is LTS. What, can you understand? The LTS full form is long term support means node.js is giving me giving us low long like uh, long term support for this this version and you can see that he's saying that 18.5.0 it's current it's latest feature but always understand but as I recommended always go for this one because this one is currently active on development this 18.5.0 is currently on active development they have some stable release but it's always on always recommended please go and install this one which one 16 point now it's 16.16.0 but suppose next after one week also they are going to release another one don't know but always remember it is if they are written here recommended for most user you go and click on this one once you click on this one it's going to download this one okay now you know how to install a node.js simply uh, how to install a software you just simply click on here and it's going to asking uh, it will go as for the basic installation next 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 you have to install because i already installed the node.js in my local i no need to do in inside my application but if you are new to node.js if you don't install node.js please go and install the node.js into your system okay simple download click on this one click on the next okay and click on the next it's going to click on the next it's going to simply click on next forget about this one Click on next and it will install. <clears throat> now it will take some time to install the Node.js into a system. Please do it along with me, whatever I am doing. If you, are, if, you, if you are in in front of a system, please go and set up this one. Side by side, please go and do all these things. Then end of this uh, session, you can able to know that how to do all the practice, all these things. Okay. Now, now it's going to install the install the node.js into local because this is the basic software is required to write any node.js application suppose if you are in different machine suppose you are in suppose mac or linux if you open the node.js also it is going to give you the installation file for mac as well as the linux it's up to you but i am using windows this is giving you the windows one okay now guys let us install you can see that it's saying that compared successfully now node is successfully installed okay now now what we'll do after installation we have to check that the node just is installed successfully or not that is the main part okay if you don't know that part this is the problem then after installation you have to check that node just successfully installed in a machine or not that for that reason what will go what will do let me open the command prompt you can open any, any command prompt, you can, I can open the command prompt, okay? Now what we'll do, we'll type here, node hyphen v. Okay, node, you can open any command prompt and type node hyphen v. Node for node, node just command, hyphen v means you know, version. If you click on enter, you can see that it's displaying 
16.16.0 because as if you know that I have currently installed 16.16.0 for the this one right now this is the current version of your node.js if anyone facing any challenges if you don't know it's not displaying anything just try to reinstall or please let me know okay guys this is the first thing we must have to know to start the node.js first you have to go and install node.js after you install node.js open command prompt and type here type here like um, version and type here node hyphen v it's going to display you the node.js version whatever currently into your system got it guys understand okay if anyone facing any challenges please let me know i'll go to yeah someone asked me question this is only work windows 8 or higher yes yes uh, because i don't know like people are using windows 8 as of now but yes it is going to work on the windows 8 and higher yeah and someone uh, told that 16.15.1 that is fine also no issue you can install any 16 point version because i'm just showing you these are the version i have installed and please try to upgrade your window if someone is using the window 8.1 okay you can upgrade your window because that is some prerequisite they are saying that uh, which uh, like uh, the os they are supporting you, you can also see that one okay now now let's go to the second part now we have installed the node.js right what is npm guys little bit we will stop here we are not going to focus the npm now because we, because this this package we are not going to be using as of now when that is a use i'll tell you about this part okay now go back now they are saying install the angular cli okay they are saying install the angular cli we have to understand what is a cli guys there are two type of cli available not cli actually there is two type of command available one is gui graphical user interface another one is cli command line interface guys understand this angular is a command line interface means whatever you are going to do all the things you are going to do by your command means suppose you know the traditional programming suppose make dr is used to create a directory right but nowadays suppose you want to create a directory simply right click here and create a new folder right if you compare between this thing if i right click and create a new folder here this is called a gui graphical user interface means using the gui i am doing all this thing the same thing i can create using the command prompt that is called cli make dr suppose make dr new folder means this is the command prompt using this command prompt i can also create a folder right guys this command is called cli command line command line interface means you are using a command you are going to use that this one but this is called the in gui you are using the gui you are developing this one but angular saying they are supporting the cli means command command line you have to use a command to create angular application you want to use a command to run the application lot of thing you can do using the command prompt application only now they are saying install the angular cli okay now let's understand what is the cli how to install cli let's understand let me copy this command okay now let's go understand this part it's called npm install hyphen g angular cli let's understand this part guys npm is full from is node package manager the node package manager guys let's go to node package manager and understand what is the npm then we'll go and install about all these things okay before that understand what is a package manager a package manager means it's a repo for all the packages what is a repo means suppose you are developing one library and you want to publish that library that someone going to use that is called the package to store the package we can require different different package manager and that package manager we are going to use now the node node js also giving a package manager a repository using that we can store our own repo we can store our own uh, packages you know that suppose you are developing dotnet or java application dotnet you are using nuget package manager which is a package manager which store all the packages 
same as in the java we are using maven to store the all the packages right the same to same we have a npm site npmjs.com which is called for the node package manager which is store all the packages means suppose if i going to install the angular suppose i want to install any packages then i have to use the node package manager command suppose so i want to install the angular then i'll simply type go angular now if i go and open the angular you can see that angular cli is there if i click on angular cli this is the package which is exist inside the npm means all the angular code all the angular runtime is available inside the cli how to download the cli this cli is available inside the npm okay now if I open the npm, you can see this command, you can see that npm install. Now install is used to install the package, okay, install the package. You know that npm is the package manager site, npm is the store the package, install command is used to install the package. Now hyphen g, left it as of now, let's go for the angular.cli, okay, angular.cli, this is the G will, uh, hyphen G I will discuss later but I will understand this part angular.cli means I want to install the package which package angular CLI okay into my system now if you open this angular CLI inside our this npm package manager once you open let's see what are the things displaying here they are saying that angular slash CLI you can see here a TS they are saying that this angular cli is built using the typescript okay this is saying that this is using the typescript and is saying that what is the current version 14.0.5 14.0.5 is the current version of our angular now what is public is saying that this is the public package means anyone able to access this package and third one is published three days ago they are saying that this package was published using the three days ago okay now guys this is the basic of a package but if you can see that there is a different tab tabs available here readme explore dependencies dependence and version we are not going to discuss all these things let me go and focus on the angular version just to imagine suppose you are going to work in an existing project okay existing project means suppose you are working on a project which project is developed in angular suppose 8 or angular 9 now how you can go and develop suppose if i go and install this package now it's going to give me 14.0.5 because this is the latest version right suppose i want to install angular 8 or angular 9 or angular 10 anything then guys same time if you click on the version here you can able to see that all the version available here whatever version you want to install you can you can choose and you can install that one suppose i want to install angular 8 and angular 9 just example I have to click this angular 8.3.2.9 this is the angular uh, version available now you can see that once you click it's going to give me the npm install command if you copy this one and paste it here you will see that nothing difference just type g here nothing difference only difference is here at the rate 8.3.2.3.2.9 guys what is this 8.3.2.9 this is the version of package if you don't give any other version then it's going to install the latest package what is latest package the latest package you all know that previously it's 14.0.3 right that was the latest package now that is the latest if you don't add 14.0.5 if you don't add any other symbol here then it's going to install the whatever the latest package is there that is going to install if you want to specify the specific package why i am saying specific package because suppose you are developing in a company that company the application already developed if you in that case you have to specify the version if you specify the version you have to use the other rate symbol at the rate the version name when you're going to install this version name then what will happen it's going to it's going to install this specific version into your memory but it's depend upon which what type of application development suppose your application developing on scratch then you can go for angular cli suppose you are de developing application on target to specific version then you can use the other symbol and the version name 
Okay, now let's go back to the hyphen G. What is the use of hyphen G? Guys, in NPM, when you install the package, there is a two scope available. Okay, what is two scope? Scope means the area where it's going to install the package. One is the local scope, another one is the global scope. Okay, what is local or global? I'll let you know. The global scope. Guys, for local scope, we don't need to specify hyphen G. By default, when you install the package, npm install CLI is going to install into your local package. But if you go and use hyphen G, it's go for the global scope. Then you'll ask me a question: what is the benefits of using the local and global? I tell you. Just imagine now you have installed the Angular CLI, which is actually 14.0.5 you develop one application same time if you go and you want to install another application then again you have to do the same thing again you have to go and type the angular install angular cli no if you hype if you put hyphen g inside the npm install it's going to store this angular cli in global scope no need to load the angular cli again and again when creating the application means if you are using the normal scope, normal scope in local scope, then every time suppose suppose now you're developing one application called project one. Okay, project one. Again, you are developing for project two. Suppose if you are going to use this normal syntax, this one, I am not specifying any G or anything, then project one also you need to install this one. Project two also you're going to install this one. Why? Because this is the local dependency you loaded. But if you are using the hyphen G, hyphen G, once you install, if you are going to create n number of a project, okay, project n, then no need to install the Angular CLI again and again. Once you install, install, no need to develop other things, no need to install the same Angular multiple times. That's the reason you are using the hyphen G. G stands for the global. And if you don't specify G, it's a local scope. What it? I think you will be clear about the, all the components of this Angular, the CLI. Now, guys, let's go and do one thing. Let's install the Angular. Now, before going to Angular CLI, if you suppose if you uh, did not suppose in my system, I already installed the Angular CLI. If you don't install, if you already install, then check that after installation, you have to check that Angular is installed or not. For that reason, what will go? First, will go please type this one uh, let me paste this tab paste this one into chat box please all of you please download this one please install this one into a common prompt this whatever tag i send right if you go and install this one i will paste it here right after i paste the npm install hyphen g angular cli you have to press the enter once you press the enter it's going to install the package nothing to do just install going to install the package okay please try this one Please install the package into a local npm install hyphen g other angular cli it's going to install the package into your local global, global scope guys once the package installed okay once the package is installed please go and type in the command prompt angular space version sorry type ng version type ng version You can see that after installing this npm after you install this cli once you have successfully then you go and click and type ng space version let me type it ng guys <coughs> show it I will type ng space version. Try it along with me. Once you type ng version, you can see that a, a screen there. And that screen, let me type in the chart, guys, ng version. I will send the tag there. You can type it ng version. I can see that once you enter ng version, you can able to see that Angular CLI. Angular CLI 13.3.4. In my local, I have installed 13.3.4. 
if in your system it's going to suppose you are installing first time it's going to spend 14.04 0.5 what is the node package version package manager version os version angular what are other 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 packages that showing here okay now i hope you're able to see this screen as of now ng version you can able to see all the things my local i have installed 13.3.4 in your system it may be going to display 14.0.5 because you are going to install first time okay this will be going to change apart from this everything will be same only this version going to be changed right okay. after you install this npm after you install the angular now the time to create the angular application got it now first we install the node.js second we have installed the uh, this uh, angular cli now third we are going to install we are going to create an application okay now the syntax is how to create a angular application to create an angular application the command is ng first understand ng guys if i see that i have typing ng here guys if you see angular angular you are they are using this ng if you see that this ng as the ng command sorry ng angular this ng the short form of angular is ng ng stands for angular but here a ng ng is the command he is taking from here only this ng right ng stands for angular command means we are not going to write fully angular we are going to write short command form angular is called ng same way i want to create an application ng new okay ng new ng new is stands for create a new application type along with me ng new and you can going to create a application okay suppose if i going to create an application i can going to give any name okay the application name let me give and create an application called to do app okay it's called to do app okay don't give any space just if you have a space just give a hyphen okay to do app means application the application name is to do app you can choose any directory is up to you i have created inside c training i have created the c inside a c folder i have a training uh, training is the folder inside that we have a, i created application ng new to do now let's understand what is the new application new create a create a new project then type type ng new project name guys you know that ng stands for angular ng ng for angular command the new stands for create new project and cmd stands for sorry the project name is the name of the project right guys now if typing this ng new project name okay i'll send the chart in the chart if you want to use this this project name guys you can make a dynamic okay mean dynamic means it's give your name okay this project name is totally you can give your name it's up to you whatever same way we can giving your name is to do up then same way you can give the name whatever you want to choose what we are going to create a to do up now okay now <clears throat> here after you give the ng new to do app just click on enter once you click on enter it's going to ask you some questions i'll i'll tell you what are the questions they are going to ask what you want to mark okay now it's asking would you like to add angular routing it's for everyone is anyone trying now you can able to see the same thing it's going to ask you you want to install angular or you want to you want to add angular routing or not you can press yes what is routing i'll discuss later but as of now the smart card routing yes once you click on enter it's saying that which style sheet format would you like to use okay suppose if you know css because there is now in the market there is different different type of css available is css scss sas and less but as of now we are going to only focus on css because css scss totally different we are going to focus on css if you are going to if you are going to choose any other one just use the down and up arrow to go up and down 
once you choose the CSS, just click on enter. Once you click on enter, you can see that it's going to create some folder for us. It's just creating some file and installing the package. Please, meanwhile, it's creating the application. Please, all the people who are in front of the system, please try to create the same thing. If anyone facing any issue, anything, please let me know. Okay, we'll pause for two or three minutes because until unless it's going to install, we are going to wait for that time and then we'll discuss about the application structure. Okay. <clears throat> Meanwhile, please go and install all the things and create your own application. Side by side, whatever I'm, I'm going to give you, the same thing, please go and implement inside your application. Okay. Now, wait for some time and please do, please do into your system also. Now guys, you can see that um, my application, like you can see that the whatever application we have created that is installed successfully, you can see that lot of things are creating like installing package, doing something. Okay, forget about this one. We are not going to discuss all these things. Okay. Before going into whatever project we have created, we have created a project called uh, to do app, right? Whatever project we have created, this to do app, this to do app, before going that, let me discuss about the code editor. Now understand what is a code editor. I know that you people already know the code editor because if you are developing Java, you are using Eclipse. Suppose you are using .NET, you are using uh, your Visual Studio Code, Visual Visual Studio, the Visual Studio One. Suppose you are developing C and C++, you are using their own editor, right? Now you people know that what is the benefits of editor because it's going to write the program very fast and execute there, right? Now same way guys, to develop to write any code of angular we are going to use the we are going to use the editor that is called vs code okay now vs code is the uh, now the leading code editor in the market it's called the visual studio code which is used to write all the front end code not only front end any code you can write but as of now i am saying that all the front end coding you can going to write in the visual studio code the VS Code is our code editor which is used to write the code for our Angular application. Now before going into that uh, whatever project we have created, let's go and first create this, first install this code editor into our local, then we'll go and see how to use the code editor for the Angular application. Okay. Now, if you see here, after opening this Visual Studio Code, let me send this link to chat box please go and uh, open this video should have code and once you open this link you can see able to see that the first page is displaying download for windows table suppose you are using different uh, uh, machine you suppose you are using mac or anything just click it here and you can able to download for different different different, different platform as of now if you want to download just click on the download for window click on this download for window okay now it's going to download and you can simply follow the installation process next 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 whatever you're doing the process right simple installation process you can follow because already the vs code is installed in my system no need to install again okay now now after you install the visual studio code let me open the vs code okay to type just open the type the vs code once you click on vs code you can able to see that this is our vs code forget about this one this is our vs code okay now this is our vs code editor we are going to write the vs code we are going to write our own code the okay. same way before writing the code we have created the application inside this folder this is called a c training folder what i'll go i'll go to the c training folder and inside that you can see that i have a folder called to do app same way in your machine also suppose you are developing inside the c or d or e any uh, drive inside that whatever folder you have created please go there please go there and do one thing just open this folder you can able to see your project name here suppose you're giving a project name xyz then you can see that there is a folder called xyz there okay and just do one thing just click just open this to do app this is the full application name open this one now you can see that we have list of folder and files available here okay 
we'll discuss the folder and file structure later but as of now you can see that lot of files created and lot of folders also created okay now now what we'll do we are going to open this application in vs code okay one thing let me close the vs code as of now suppose if i want to open this this, this application vs code i can simply go right click here and if you go to soar mode because if you are using the windows 11 the or any windows right click you can say open with code the option will come called open with code if i click on open with code then it's going to open the project inside the code this pop-up will come guys first time going to open you just click on yes i trust the author click on yes now you can see that all my application is opening left hand side this is the one way you can open the application using the vs code what is the first way first you have to go to the folder which folder your project is created right click there and right click and property open with code this is the one way okay this is the one way you can open the project this is the first way second one let me close it second one is manually open the vs code manually open the vs code and file go to file just a second just to click on file open folder okay and after opening folder you can see select the folder name and click on the open whichever folder you have a project just click the folder name and open folder you can able to see the application here this is the two way you can open the project but there is another way you can also open the project using the vs code that is called command prompt format let me close it here now guys you can see that i have opened the project using the uh, my project inside the c training let me go to that folder it is called a to do folder right i am now inside the c training to do folder right this is my folder name suppose if i go to open this application using the command prompt then what will do i write code space dot dot stands for all now how we are doing right click and open with uh, this code same thing you can also do using the command prompt command line code like simple code dot and click on enter you can able to see the project is also going to open using the vs code got it guys means in this three way you can able to open any visual studio code using the any project using the vs code right now first one is go and right click here open the project second one is manually go to the vs code open the folder third one is using the code editor right now this is the three way you can using the vs code now now guys let me go and open the vs code let me open the vs code now open on, on Now let, let's see that. Here, guys, after opening this one, you can able to see that I have. Let's understand this code editor first. Then we'll go and understand about other part. You can see that. Let me choose this one. Okay, you can see here. Left hand side, I have some icons here, and bottom I have something, and top we have something, right? Now this first one is the explorer this explorer is a major file explorer okay and once you open this explorer you can see that to do app to do app is your application name whatever application name you are giving this is the folder name okay if you open this one you can be able to see list of files here now inside the files we will go and discuss each and every files okay but before that let's explore this um, editor now here if you have to search anything and search anything here is the source control github you are going to show the github how to push the code in github now the run and debug how to run the debug the application and this is the extension how to install the extension this all are things are there okay but this is not required as of now let's only focus on the explorer okay now same way now you can see that my editor is looks like black because i am using the black one suppose you want to change to white or anything suppose you are suppose by default you install vs code it displaying the white one suppose you want to change the black one then how can change the color color of this one just go to edit sorry go just go to sorry files 
and click on the preference and go for the color themes okay let's go to the color themes and here you can see that you have a list of themes is available here suppose you want to choose any themes just click and go for the uh, mouse arrow up and down you can see able to see different different things is coming right there are different different th themes are available inside this application suppose you want to install any specific one just click on the browse additional themes here you can go and install the different themes but by default it's giving us the this one but we are going to use the dark one i am going to use the dark one if you want to change to light one also you can change to light one okay it's up to you okay let's go use a light one that is a good one so okay now let's go and understand between the uh, let's go and focus about this part this is the basic part you have to know guys this is the how to change the um, preference all these things but if you go and more explore this one you can able to do a lot of thing here but as of now we are going to only focus on this uh, folder structure okay now now once you create any application using any project using the angular cli you can know that by default there is some thing is created okay you can see that some files some folder is created now it's as a developer if you're a developer you must have to know the file and folder structure for the application okay now let's go and understand each and every file and folder structure application guys let me change to black one only this is not looks good now now understand this file and folder structure this is the most important to know before going into the actual code we'll go from bottom to top okay we'll go from start from here to the top guys first we we'll understand ts config just ignore this one just go for ts config guys ts config is called TypeScript configuration because every time because you know our application is going to develop using the typescript we are not using the javascript i'll explain don't forget about thing i'll go to explain everything about typescript and javascript for our application how to write typescript code how typescript code is going to convert a javascript code let i'll discuss everything uh, in, in in second half okay now first understand this part first file is ts config just ignore this one guys this folder is a typescript configuration now you'll ask me a question what is a typescript configuration if you remember our things, as I told, when you develop any application that is going to target the browser, you must have to know HTML, CSS, JavaScript because these three are the language for the browser, right? Three are the language for the browser. Means browser only able to understand HTML, CSS, JavaScript. But we are now going to learn about TypeScript. But I told typescript is not compatible with java not compatible with the browser because browser only knows javascript now what guys happening when we are going to write any code in typescript this typescript code is converting again to javascript means i say that we are going to write code in javascript typescript now the compiler is going to compile this application to javascript how is it working we will discuss later but our we are going to write code in java typescript then finally it's going to convert into javascript why javascript because browser only know javascript okay now these are the configuration these are the configuration for the browser to run the typescript application what is all these things we are not going to discuss as of now this is not nothing just a configuration part we'll see what is the use of this one okay now there is tsconfig.spec.json understand spec anywhere you will find this spec file it's known as it's a unit test case file this is a test case file for typescript okay now ignore this one not required just focus on the tsconfig okay Who, which files are required i'll let you know but later you'll understand about other things now tsconfig r.json guys tsconfig is the file which is for global TypeScript configuration, but for project specific configuration, this is a tsconfig app.json. You can see that tsconfig.json is the file which is extend inside the tsconfig app.json. This is extends these files. Means this tsconfig contains some global configuration. And if you want to 
change this configuration specific to your requirement then you can change using the tsconfig app.json this is the extended version of this tsconfig and this tsconfig app.json is used inside your project okay now these are these all are the configuration files there is no link with code but it's better to understand what is the files responsible for which things readme.md okay and this md this file is a is the uh, like suppose when you're developing an application and suppose you want to write any manuals for your application this this is the markdown uh, language you can write your uh, your all the deployment how to deploy how to run lot of things going to discuss all these things okay now package.json this is the package size uh, what is this con all the package is going to install all these things it's there okay guys before explaining other files because if you go one by one by one file then you will be a little bit complicated then before going into file structure and explaining other stuff let first install first run the application and we'll see how the application looks like and then we'll go and understand about this packet.json okay now let's go and run this application once the application run then we'll go and come explain about this folder structure okay now to run the application please go to click on terminal click on new terminal okay in the in the file go to terminal click on new terminal okay you can see that you can be able to see your folder structure here and if you're installing the um, this vs Studio code first time you can able to see that instead of in window if you are not seeing this one i think you are able to see this one this structure power cells okay power cells also a command prompt lang, command prompt one for the windows as of now we are not going to use power cells simply click it here this arrow right this arrow and click on command prompt okay once you command prompt you can able to see this structure is here now we will go and run the angular application to run the angular application the command is ng a c r b e serve ng space serve click on enter once you click on enter we'll see that how it's working okay let's wait for some time you can do the same with me in a local also if you are opening your application you we'll do the same thing simply go and type ng space serve i have sent this command into our um, chat box please go and type this one ng space serve now guys after you install after you type this one you can see that initial chunk something is got created okay forget about this one but focus this one angular live development server is listening on localhost 4200 open your browser on this one let me click on the control and click it here once you click it here you can you can know that now this is opening inside my browser now let's see how the application looks like it's opening localhost 4200 and this is the header and something is displaying forget about what is displaying this is the default design given by the angular okay now you can see that now our application is successfully run into the browser and this is our localhost 4200 and is displaying the content now you'll ask me a question what is this localhost and what is this 4200 let's understand this part then we'll go and check other part guys we are running our application into local right local means a local also contain one address right suppose you are accessing suppose um, flipkart you are accessing synotech site all contain node.js angular everyone content is dns this is the domain name same way guys suppose if you want to run any application into your local the address name is localhost or you can know that well known 127.0.0.1 this is the localhost address and localhost is the for all the applications now for angular application you are using the 4200 port you can change any port but by default angular is giving us 4200 port to run the application now 
for that reason when you go and type ng serve the ng serve is going to create a server for us using the localhost 4200 port okay the same thing happening in background to all this thing guys happening running a browser all this thing is happening using the node.js node.js is giving a runtime using that runtime we can able to create a browser we are able to create an address inside this address we are running our angular application now you will tell me okay i don't want to use this uh, by default uh, this 4200 i want to use 1234 yes you can also do that how you can do that suppose once you install it is there if you want to stop it i will simply go and press control c if i press control c it is going to stop the terminal same as suppose i want to change the port i will simply write ng sir hyphen hyphen port equal to 1234 okay you type ng sir hyphen hyphen port equal to 1234 click on enter is going to create the same application using different port i'll tell you let me wait for some time you can also try the same thing in your machine okay now you can see that it's saying that open your browser one, local host one two three four if you click on this one you can see that my application is running one two three four this is the way you can change your port means port changing means if you don't want to use four two double zero you can also do and change to one two three four it's up to you how, how we're going to do that but syntax is this one let me copy and Uh, ng server is not working what the error is showing okay if ng server is not working i tell you one thing let me go okay guys the this is the way you can able to create uh, the application now let me stop it and again i'll type another command is called npm start try this one npm space start if you click on npm space start and enter it is also going to create it is also going to start the application yeah go so type npm space start this is the another way we can start the application okay, okay. same way it's going to run by default 4 to double zero if yeah yeah nidhi if you are uh, facing the problem ng server is not working just type npm start it's going to start your application npm start once npm start it's going to start the application now now you will confuse why, why i am using ng serve why i am using npm start lot of thing right now let's back to the, the point about package.json because to know this package JSON, we have to know this part this application, how to run the application. Right? Now, guys, if you open the package JSON, you can see that some structure is here. First, you have to understand this part. If I collapse this file, you can see that I have a name here. Right? The name is to do up. The version is here by default 0 0.0.1. You can see here script. Script is there. Then dependency, dev dependency. Now first understand this script guys when i open the terminal and click on npm start npm start right then what happening guys you know this npm start is looking for this packet.json okay npm starts is looking for packet.json file if once the packet.json file is got it is going to the packet.json file inside the script tag understand this this flow once i type this npm start it's going to the package.json and inside the json file is looking for the script tag inside the script tag you can see list of values there when you type start it's go for the start one and it's going to change to ng serve means whatever you're going to try to ng serve right the same ng is going to call using the npm start 
suppose anything you want to change suppose you want to change your port you can simply go write port equal to 1234 means every time no need to go and type ng sir port 1234 ng sir port 12 xy like um, 2354 no need to change what it will do you can create a shortcut for your command this is the command which is used to run the application instead of writing the same command every time what it will do you can configure your command using the npm npm start when npm start npm node package manager start means it should go for this packet or json inside the script folder inside the start when you find the start it's going to be execute this command if you see this one you can find that when I type ng serve, sorry, sorry, when I type, you can see that when I go and type npm start, a second, npm start, you can see that internally it's going and executing ng serve. See that ng serve. But where does ng serve exist? This ng serve exists inside the start tag. The benefit of using npm start means ng server, so you can start the application the benefit is suppose if you are changing your application some configuration suppose you are changing some configuration part here then no need to type that configuration all the time going to run the application instead of writing that just type all the command prompt here and bind with start when type a npm start it's go internal to start key and execute this value inside our application this is a shortcut command of the start but later we will learn what is the build all this thing we will going to learn later but simple for npm start same as start the ng serve but difference is ng serve every time you will go on uh, if any additional configuration port or something then you go and type that every time instead of writing that one we are going to use the start one <coughs> okay this is the all about our script tag right now same way you can also write your own tag guys here you can suppose ng start you can suppose ng suppose engine start you can write engine here you can do it here it's up to you how you can do how you can go write it it's up to you okay but i'm just saying that npm pen start now private this project is a private forget about this one now let's focus on these two part dependency and dev dependency and why i'm focusing all these things okay uh, someone asked me uh, please repeat again npm start flow okay yeah need there okay let me someone asked me to explain this npm start flow let me understand <coughs> guys the official command for the official command for start a angular application is ng serve okay if you type ng serve it's going to serve the application inside which folder which folder application exists this is the I, I think you already got it right suppose you want to change the port i write port equal to one two three four okay now i click on enter just just i copy it i click on enter okay now after entering this one now my application is going to run it which port one two three four port same way suppose next time you are going to open the application what will do again will go and type ng serve port 1234 and in this case guys what will happen every time you want to run the application suppose i stop it application again i want to run it i will simply go and type npm start sorry ng serve hyphen hyphen port 1234 instead of writing every time this code what you will do go to simple this packet.json and go to the start start is the com key inside here go and type here this one ng sir port 1234 now guys if i go and type here npm start which is npm start means let me start this one npm start you can see that it's going to execute it's going to execute this one two three four port i am not going to write the same code again means npm start just a alias alias means is just a syntax using this start you can executing this one here means 
I am not writing anything this code again and again. Simply I will go on npm start. All the start what you want to do you can configure here. Okay, this is the only port. Now also you can specify the host. Lot of things you can specify using the ng serve. Okay, in this case writing the same code again and again. I can simply write all the code of that configuration once and using the start once. That next time if I write npm start is going to the start one execute this command. Right. So same way I stop it. I want to run again. Then I, I will not go and type ng serve. I will simply write npm start. So what will happen? npm start will go and go and execute this code. It is just a shorthand format for the ng serve. Means this is the long command. You want to make it short, then you have to use the start one. The start contain this command. When I type the start, internally it is calling this command, but I am not going to write all this full command. Okay. Now, got it? Now let me stop it and let me revert back everything. Okay. And let uh, it write npm start. Okay, what is the use of watch? Let me tell you now. Now tell you watch. Okay. Actually, I'm going there watch because watch I'll explain guys this one when we are going to discuss on the code part. Guys, guys watch means I'll tell you watch means you know that it's looking something like right? watching something. This part I'll tell you guys when I'm going to explain the source part. Okay. Just ignore this one as of now. <clears throat> now let's go and discuss about not able to find the port okay now now guys let's go for dependency and dev dependency dependency means to run this angular application run this angular application then i have you these are the dependencies required what is dependency what are the different package we are running to run this application these are the packages required if you open your angular json file Angular sorry, this package JSON file. You can able to see, suppose you are in, you can able to see 14 point or something able to you, but this is not a matter. You can see that all the things are installed here. This is a dev dependency will go will back here later when going to install the different package. Then dev dependency to run the application in local, we also require a dev dependency. Means what is the TypeScript we are using, what is the Angular dev toolkit we are using, all these things are using here because this is the dev development dependency. We'll discuss when go over deployment architecture, when going to deploy the application. That time I'll tell you what is the use of a dependency, what is the use of the dev dependency. The only difference is dependency is using these packages, we can go to deploy the application. Dev dependency means to run the application in local, we require these packages. We'll discuss all these things, guys, a little bit more in your application when go and deploy the application. Okay. <clears throat> Now, packet lock, forget about this one. Karma config.json, this is this is for the unit test case. To run the unit test case, we require karma config because karma and jasmine we are going to use it to run our um, uh, unit test case. That is going to cover in the last part of our project. Then Angular JSON, guys, this is the heart of the Angular. Like all the Angular application configuration is uh, built here. Like what is the project name, what is the prefix, what is the environment, lot of things are discussed here. We'll back here when we're going to do the when the that term will come, we'll back to Angular JSON and discuss about all these things. Okay. Not all these things, but what are the basic things that are required? We'll go and discuss here. Okay. Now, git ignore. This is the files which is used for the GitHub. Let's suppose in because I'll show you how to push the code into Git. That time I'll I'll tell you what is the use of a git, uh, git uh, ignore file. Editor config no use. Browser uh, browser list src no use. I will explain this. I'm not going to spend this much more time on this. But lastly, if you get much more time, we'll go and discuss about this thing because you know that editor config to do the editor configuration. All this editor configuration here. Browser list src means to target which browser they are saying all these things like Chrome, Firefox, Edge. Which are the browser targeting? All they are saying, all these things. There is no use of these two, but okay, this is okay for as of now. Okay, now actual main things we have to discuss about this SRC folder because finally, as a developer, we are going to write the code, right? 
writing the code with a folder called src guys this src is stands for source src folder is src full name is source if you open the source you can see that we have a list of files and folder inside this let's understand from bottom to top upwards okay what are the files is used <coughs> test.ts guys this is these files is used for all the style sheet all the test case configuration all the test case running we are going to use a test.ts okay just know the overall idea when going to use that that time we will go and discuss all this thing in depth style.css is the files which is which is um, uh, style.css is a global global style sheet, style sheet for the application we can add all the global style sheet for the our application polyfish.ts is used used for backward compatibility browser support suppose you are developing the application and that application is going to support for the uh, suppose previously internet explorer and opera in other browser that time you're going to add the polyfills now now polyfills is not required as of now but the default is there main.ts this is the this is the entry point of the application all the angular application is going to start from here okay index.html this is the file is the ui file for the application all the ui stuff whatever going to develop that is going to display here fab icon you know that fab icon you already know that favorite icon every browser content any favorite icon you can add this fab icon here environments suppose you are a developer you are going to develop the application in multiple environments suppose you are in development then go for test then go for uat then go for production then this environment file is going to contain all the environment configuration for your application the assets folder assets folder is the folder which is going to store all the images and static file for your project suppose you want to store any images or video or anything or then you are going to add inside the assets folder but in between all these things the main folder is app folder is called application folder or app folder okay this app folder is the folder where you are going to actually write the code means whatever you are able to see it now, now here everything is designed in this app folder app folder you can see that we have app module app component ts specs html css and module okay these are the different different files which is created inside the okay assets folder okay i'll go back there these are the different different files I, i'll back to assets and environment okay these are different different files which are created by default by the angular okay what is the use of modules what is a component what is a module lot of thing going to discuss now but before that some people are asking about this assets and environment folder let me again explain this one just guys example one thing suppose you are developing one application and that application now in development now you are going to move into testing right so about the test engineer going to test it for test engineer suppose you want to create an environment right for test engineer they are api they are database everything is different for that reason if you want to create any configuration for different different environment then you can use this environments file suppose now by default we have i actually back here so environment file is by default is development and production suppose right for development suppose you want to add another uh, environment called staging or uat or something then you can create this environment here and you can see this when you build this application it's going to add this environment this environment is the configuration file for your application suppose you want to define any key you know define any endpoint you want to define any file you have to define any suppose um, suppose any mechanism for any any kind of a constant value everything you are going to define in this environment file right in this case environment is the folder which is used to define all the environment specific development now we are we are in development all the, de the environment development we're going to do in this environment suppose in the production you want to define anything else then you are going to define production the same way we can go and create n number of environments i will show this example when actually going to implement this application okay now let's go to app assets folder guys example 
these files this this logo suppose uh, if i go to home this this icons everything's called images right now the question is how to store that images and suppose suppose you want to add some video you want to display some video all these images and any kind of media file if you want to store inside your application then you want to store inside the assets folder assets means it should a folder which is going to store all the static files static means it may be your logo it may be your suppose any kind of icons everything under store you can go to store in the assets folder right we will see how the assets folder is going to work now let's go for this app folder okay now guys in this app is the actual coding folder as a developer you are going to focus on this not you have to focus everything you have to focus but as a developer you are to going to work with this app folder app folder is called application folder all your application code all your everything is going to exist inside this app folder means how to, when you run the application you can able to see this screen right this key see the screen is this screen designing everything is happening inside this app folder where this happening i will discuss but you can see here we have different different file from bottom to top we have a module file we have a component file we have a specs file we have a html file css file and module file routing file then i will go and explain all these thing what is a component what is a module what is a routing everything will go and discuss okay now let's get started our real implementation of angular we will see what you need to do okay before going that uh, i know that like um, before this uh, like first up we have discussed about this uh, file and folder structure and we have also go to all these things but we expect this app folder right <clears throat> now this before going and discuss all this app folder we will go and discuss what the things we are going to develop today okay like uh, in this two days workshop what are the things we are going to perform okay let me draw something like what other application we are going to develop let's first discuss that thing then we will come and discuss about the project like discuss about the application how it's going to work because you know that starting any project the planning is most important right we have to fast do the project planning what we are going to do list out all the features and we will go and implement all the features okay now guys i know all of you know the to do app right i know all of you know to do app to do app means it is a simple app like uh, let me draw a, a um, screen here like we have a, a text box here right and uh, we have a list of option let me write it down the list of option and we are going to add tax here right suppose task one <coughs> a second uh, it's a, a task one and same way we are going to add a task two just i'm drawing and drawing something okay let we'll go and understand this thing task two so on we are going to add n number of task right and each and every task okay we have a, a radio button that is going to mark as a complete once you click on this one it's going to not radio button yeah make mark as a radio button it's going to mark as complete and every time we have a two option there one is if you see this one one is for um, this is one is for here edit <coughs> it's for edit another one is the delete right another one is delete look into this application delete the same things we are going to repeat for all the things right for the same thing we are going to do for the all the items right now you know basic things like once you click on here we have a add button here suppose uh, we have a add here once you click on add whatever you're going to text uh, enter here it's going to display the list here simple now now things this is looks like simple but we are going to make this application in such a way that it's going to cover our entire application things like it will going to cover component don't don't uh, bother about what i am writing here just imagine these are the concept of the angular we are going to first learn a typescript then component then templates directive 
pipes, service, routing, uh, reactive forms, HTTP clients, RxJS, lot of thing going to discuss on this. Okay, we are going to cover everything in two days. In today, we are going to go up to this pipe, okay, and uh, pipe or this uh, reactive forms. And next day, we are going to discuss about the RxJS and the HTTP client. And we're going to focus on the uh, these are multilingual how to make the application multilingual and second we're going to focus on the new test case and finally if you got time we're going to deploy the application and discuss about the basic angular interview questions okay <clears throat> now let's go through this, this one first now if you see this one let's go and understand what are the features we are going to build in this task now guys you can see this one what are the features we are going to develop? Let me first create a features list. Okay. Now, let me create a file. Uh, no, let me open this one. Let me go to this readme.md. Okay. Readme.md or file here. We are going to add our all the notes. Okay. Now, now the application name is app name is to do. To do. Right. The description. What is description? manage own task simple one now let's go and discuss about features what are the features we are going to provide first one okay first write all the features here and design all the mockups here then only we will go and start the actual project implementation okay now forget about everything about what is angular how to write the code forget about these things only focus requirement analysis and the features okay Guys, first features. The features one is one feature features is add to do our task. First add task. What is our task? Like let me compare, it will go and discuss side by side with add this thing. Okay. Okay. Our task. You can see here this is the art task, right? This is the art task. Art task, what is the description we should write? We'll write add the task add the task to the list okay okay add the task to the list check this is the first thing second point we'll go for the second point the second point is second point is make sure task is required means when i go and enter this if i click on r button here then what will happen this add button click on add button this text must be enter okay guys this is the description let me make it a little bit more way this is the description the task and this is the description now the controls what are the controls is required for this add task the controls first first one is text box okay for entering the task second one is the button okay to add the task simple understand forget about this last one the text box which is used to entering the task is this one okay this one add button is used to add the task second one validations because you know that making everything we must have to do the validations we are now at task one okay validations first what is the first validation first validation is text box is required means we are going to say that when i'm going to add a task here the text box is required here okay second things task size or Guys, task size means just understand this is the text box size. Okay. Text box or task name. Task size max is 100 car. Means you can max to max enter 100 characters in this text box. You cannot enter more than 100 characters. Okay. We see. We can allow any characters. Guys, means we are not going to restrict people can enter anything okay 
they can enter other end they can enter hash they can enter anything it's up to them we are not going to restrict any characters okay there is no special characters here okay second thing third got it means if you explain this part we have a text box we have a button a text box is for adding the task the button is for uh, the text box for entering the task button is used for add the task let me button name is suppose add example okay second thing d if i click okay let's go validation let's go for event okay what is the event event means actions okay let me do for the actions understand this part because why i am writing all this thing when you are writing when you are creating any small application also you have to take care about all these things what are the controls you are using what are the validations you are doing what are the action you are performing everything you are going to do in this way okay now the actions actions means let go for the button action okay means button action or the add action button or add action okay add action in this action we are going to discuss first if i enter if i click on the button and if my text box is blank okay then display the required error in Required be, below the error required below the text box, guys. When I click on the button, okay, and click on the button. If I click on the button, if the text box is blank, blank means blank or empty, then display the required error below the text box. Means we have to display here. the error text box that is saying that this is required means the task is required got it the action second action okay second action is if text box is valid guys means if text box has entered the data and everything is okay then display the okay then check same task not exist in the list okay what i am going to say here what i am saying suppose i have entered the task called task 1 and i click on the add i have to check inside the task list in the task list the same task is exist or not if the same task is exist okay exist or not see if the same task is exist so the error as task is exist below the text box okay if i going to enter task 1 here click on add then once i click on add it's going to check the text box task is exist or not then only if it exist it's going to display the message here called task is exist okay got it guys the requirement now now this is the action for the button which button the add button or you click on add these are the things i have to follow got it now let's see what are other things we do d once the task is added into once the task is is added into list we have to clear clear the text box hello okay once we suppose you enter hello and suppose you enter task 3 here and click on add button then it will it check that task 3 is not exist it's going to add it here after adding it's going to clear the data got it it's going to clear the data just imagine adding a list how many things we have to do got it now i think you able to understand our task now let's go for the list task okay for the list task then 
second part is list tasks got it first is add task second one is list task okay now let, let me add the description what is the description display the list of task okay list of task which format so discuss the list of a task in um, in uh, like last in first out lipo format okay means whatever the data we are going to add it going to display as last suppose suppose you adding a task that task should be add in top 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 means top to bottom approach means example example task one will add so task one will going to add then it's going to be then suppose adding task one suppose you are adding another task it's going to be here task two again it's going to be task three means every time new new task card is going to add top of the list okay this is the things we have to decide that we have to decide our top of top to bottom or bottom to top these two approach will follow i'll show you because why i'm saying that i'll show you how to add a data top of of the list and bottom of the list we'll show these two two approach okay now controls we got it first of controls controls what are the controls going to use first control is it's going to use the list okay control guys this is a normal html list another control list to display the item in lists second second one second one is radio button okay third one is radio button for mark as complete i'll discuss this one see um edit button d delete button okay edit the task and delete the task understand this thing because you have to fit everything requirement in your mind everything are going to maintain everything going to maintain in this application don't think to do the, to do app do, looks like same but implementing this task is much more work okay now now after that validations okay what validation validation is once first part once the task is completed understand this part once the task is marked as completed okay suppose i mark as completed then strike through the text means once i click on this radio button right once i click on task completed once the task completed or click on radio button then strike through the text means we have to put a strike through to the text that no one we have to mark that this is got completed second one b once the task completed okay then hide the edit and delete button suppose i mark this task completed that time i have to remove this edit and delete button from this case we are not going to display the edit and display okay second thing if i click on radio button then it should do the toggle and what is toggle let me understand subtype i and double i i if click then completed if on click then active means guys if i now if i select this radio button now it will going to mark as complete if i again go to click this radio button now is completed is not which going to be active understand 
once i click active if i remove again i click it's going to inactive okay once inactive once inactive then so edit and delete button understand guys what is happening if i click the button it's completed then edit and delete is going to hide if i click the again click and the again on click then if i click hide if on click then so these things we have to implement now we can get this button is for the uh, like active or inactive then mark as completed this is going to be hide once you mark inactive it's going to be displayed right got it second things now you can got it the validations okay now validation is there validation validation means validation or you can make it actions actually there is no validation is there the actions the action is the radio button okay now let's go for the another validation that is the edit action okay edit action once click on first on click on click then display a modal display a pop up where okay no, not pop up when click on click on okay just again when click on edit display the text in above add area guys what is, what what is mean by that if i click on edit then what will happen it will the same text is going to go to here add area and also second one second one display the update and cancel button in top section means guys when i click on this edit right now i have to display a text box here text box going to display the task one here right it's going to display task one and instead of add we're going to display edit it's going to display update and cancel got it means on click of edit we are going to change this one after that okay after that see on update on update we will do the same operation as add understand this file instead of add suppose here we have update button right we have update button here update once you click on update suppose we have update cancel button right update and cancel button update and cancel once you click on update whole edit mode right it's need to be do the same operation as add okay operation add means it's going to follow all the things except option add except adding except adding adding need to update the selected items i understand this part when i will go and click on update it is going to perform all the add operation add operation means it's going to check that this um, item this is blank or not if the text is exceeded or not all the validation apart from that check that whatever updating that is exist or not but once i click what happening we are going to adding this item here right except adding we are need to update the selected whatever item i have selected that item need to be updated here we'll do all the add operation except add okay we are going to update it 
okay now d on cancel on cancel reset to normal reset to normal reset to normal means if you don't cancel it's going to be reset as it is it's going to be do that one okay now e now e is when click on add when you click on sorry when you click on click on edit then disable all other items i understand when i click on edit that time i have to disable other list so i have a 10 list also i will disable other all list i only visible this are until unless it's not update or cancel so just imagine if i edit here it's active again i'll click edit here right instead of doing that if i click on edit i have to disable all the list only enable this part understand this way so when you click on edit then disable all other item except selected item only apart from this edit everything should be going to be disable okay now why i am saying all this complicated because you have to learn a little bit more about the how the ui is work okay now third one is guys the delete action on delete okay okay on delete ask for confirm okay second means we have to display a confirm button confirm dialog we are going to ask for the delete okay now once confirm once confirm then delete the item and remove once confirm remove the item from the list what it is if i click on delete then what will happen it's going to remove this item from the list right now this is the basic operation of this one now let's go for other part list task what are other features we will do three four data storage okay data storage description store the task in memory when user refresh the page also will will display the items i understand data storage here what data storage suppose you added three items now you refresh the page now in that case also if i added three items then i need to display all the three items means on a page refresh also i have to maintain the data okay on the page refresh also i have to maintain the data then what need to be do here actions the actions need to do then every action every uh, add update sorry add yes. add update and delete update the storage means every time you're going to update any doing any operation here we have to update the storage you see we have to use local storage for this operation what is local storage i'll discuss that is this is the same you are using database right same as browser also we are going to use the local storage as a database operation right see we'll store data in json format i'll discuss this i, I know you probably know that but i'll discuss about json format how to work with json inside our application okay now after that this is the basic of local sto data storage example okay three four 
सर्ची सर्ची में फिल्टर फिल्टर द डेटा बेस्ड ऑन रिक्वायरमेंट्स रिक्वायरमेंट्स गाइस ओके द कंट्रोल्स फिल्टर कंट्रोल व्हाट आर द कंट्रोल्स व्हाट इज द फिल्टर गाइस विल ऐड ए फिल्टर हियर वन यू क्लिक ऑन फिल्टर वी कैन एबल टू फिल्टर द डेटा व्हाट 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 कैन फिल्टर गाइस वी कैन फिल्टर फर्स्ट वन वी कैन फिल्टर इज फिल्टर बाय टास्क नेम मींस वी गोइंग टू टाइप द नेम इट्स गोइंग टू डिस्प्ले ऑल द टास्क हियर राइट बी फिल्टर बाय completed means i can both combine task name as complete status because when you click on the task is completed if i mark as com include completed also it's going to search only completed if i don't include completed it's going to search everything if i going to search only completed one it's going to display me all the completed part right now these two filters we are going to do third fourth fifth language enable multi language in application okay what is the uh, actions we have to enable the language file default is english and another language english and one is suppose friends no, not friends let me add a hindi okay we will use our language only one is english or is hindi okay these two language we are going to use inside our application language okay english is our default one we can also use the telugu like uh, i'll told i'll told you like how to can use add your own language also telugu hindi bengali odia you can add any language okay but i'll tell you how to use multi language i'll tell you these two parts hindi and english like english is the default one hindi we can change we can configure means what is the use of this one because how we can enable the multi language for the application okay now like six one final one load all the data from server as means you can see here i am storing the data in my local system right i'll tell you how we can go and load the data from the server means the api part description suppose you are java you are using java api or you are using any api i'll tell you how we can communicate with the api okay okay the action is no action as of now guys because nothing is required as of now this is just a api call that time will this part we're going to discuss tomorrow but today we're going to focus other part this is the third seven part is last part guys unit test case that will discuss but this is totally little bit technical part we are going to use this unit test case later okay now now let's see guys you can see this application looks like a normal text box and button but just imagine if you going to analyze the requirement you can see that how much requirement is there let me recap all these things for your better understand then we'll go and start the actual real implementation now application name is to do description manage own tasks okay 
features is add task we have to add a task add task we have description add a task with a list then we have a button and text box which is used to add the button text box then what happening then text box is required the mean length max length lot is uh, lot of thing is there on click of the button of what need to do on click of the button of what upper need to do list task whatever going to display in the list what are the controls are available inside the list then what are the actions available lot of thing we have to discuss here right i, I think actions and this edit delete functionality or better cancel functionality source functionality lot of thing going to discuss in this part now before going into uh, our pure angular let me discuss what are the tools we are going to use developing these things first one we are going to use bootstrap for ui design bootstrap first guys we are going to use the bootstrap bootstrap is used for css library which is used for designing the ui means this is a css library two two things you are going to use what we are going to use bootstrap is the first one designing the for designing everything we are going to use this one third one we are going to use bootstrap layout designing everything going to use from bootstrap second one we are going to use uh, is uh, this is the first tool we are going to use second thing we are going to use local storage okay third we are going to use a json fourth we are going to use the um, i know if people are already work on the java api then no node just node just not required here this is the three things we are going to use any other things we are going to store we are going to use it okay in later we will think what are the tools we are going to use in in uh, future okay now these are the things we are mostly going to use in our application now got it this is the task we are going to complete in two days okay and we'll, we'll in using this everything I, I design in such a way we are going to cover end to end of angular in this to do application we are going to use component pipes everything going to use in that way okay and one thing is left here it is called routing guys that requirement i'll tell you when going to first complete this part we are going to tell you the routing part okay now routing is not here but routing i will discuss after completion of the tool okay that is just only i'll give the idea how the routing is work but first we'll go and complete all these things okay now now let's get started with our actual implementation of this angular now let's go focus on this app folder as of now forget about everything now let's go to app folder now guys once you see the app folder you can able to see that all these things app module component component specs.ts html css module.ts these are the four three six six file is created when the by default application get created now let's now as of now for time being just ignore this routing one and ignore this model one ignore just as of now We'll go and discuss all this thing later because because this is a just application right you have to first know how it's working then we'll go and focus on this component part guys as of now i did not discuss how angular work how the use of main.ts what is the use of this app model why this industrial html is available nothing i have explained i am not going to explain as of now because if you're going to explain it will take much more time to explain if you're going to do the task, then only able to understand how the thing is working. Okay, let's go and finish the create the task. Then only we'll go and discuss about in depth of each and everything. Okay, now. Now, as I told, ignore this routing and this app module. Let's focus for this app component. Now, you, you know that what is this component? App, okay, you know the application, but what is component? let's go first understand the component this is the primary concept of a angular if you develop any application using anything if you are using angular if you are using react if you are using view or using any framework the primary concept is component now let's go and discuss what is this component now why this component is required and what is the benefit of a component okay now let's go let me save it to guys look close into this this part okay let me go to okay see this one 
if you look into this page it looks like it's a site right it's a e-commerce site but just go and look into the each and individual part okay what is each and individual part let me take a screenshot of this one then we'll discuss this part Okay guys, let me squeeze this one. Okay. Now guys, see this one. Sorry. See this one. If you see this one, this is called a header, right? This is the header part. This is the menu part. This is the uh, filter part. This is the content part, right? Content part. Now, guys, if you look a little bit more closer, I can say that this is a header section, menu section, filter section, and the content section. If I go and divide everything, if I go and divide everything, I'll tell that this is one of the part, this is part, this is, but means these all are different, 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 different part. What I'll do now, let me cut all this part. Okay. Let me cut all this part. Then what I'll do, I'll paste it here. This is header part. Okay. Just imagine this is header part. Same way, I'll go and cut this part. Put it here. And so on, I'll cut this part and put it here. Forget about these other things. Now, if you look into this, I have a clear, clear side. But what I did, I have cut all these things different, 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 different part. Guys, this different, different section and different, different part is called as component. Means component is nothing, it's a section or it's a block, okay, or it's an area. Understand this way. And what I'm saying, I have developed header component, I have developed the menu component, I have developed footer component and the content component. Got it? Now, in this case, what will happen? In this case, if I create this header component, now this is one of the separate component, separate section. Now, if I go and create different, 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 different component and combine all the components, then I create a page. Look is right. If I say header is a component, menu is a component, filter and content is a component. What I'll do, I'll create separate, separate component and combine all the component and create a page. Now you'll ask me a question. Why I'll create a component? First, understand what is a component. Component, guys, simple as a block or a container or a section. Right? In a section or it's a column. You can say anything. Section. Now, the benefit of using a component is it's a isolation. What is isolation? I tell you. Suppose just imagine you have a class. I'll, I'll, I'll go a little bit uh, programming way. Suppose you have a class. Okay? Suppose you are developing if a class the class name is suppose website just imagine programmatically the website you know the website contain different different section let me create different different section as a function or method the so function is suppose header another function called content we suppose menu this way don't forget about syntax this may be any syntax i'm writing any syntax then think about this suppose uh, content another one is footer understand this way i can say that all these three are different different functions Functions means they are doing their work. Suppose 
हेड्रा इज डूइंग इट्स वर्क मेनु इट्स डूइंग इट्स वर्क कॉन्टेल डूइंग इट्स वर्क फुट ऑल्सो डूइंग इट्स वर्क एंड इफ ए गो एंड कंबाइन एवरीथिंग इट्स गोइंग टू रिप्रेजेंट द वेबसाइट क्लास राइट ए सेम आज गाइस इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड इन माय एप्लीकेशन इन माय वेब पेज आई एम टेलिंग दिस इज माय वेब पेज बट दिस वेब पेज आल्सो डिवाइड इनटू मल्टीपल डिफरेंट डिफरेंट पार्ट और मल्टीपल डिफरेंट डिफरेंट फंक्शन जस्ट ट्रीट एज अ फंक्शन मल्टीपल पार्ट और कंपोनेंट आई कैन से दैट हेडर इज अ कंपोनेंट दिस इज अ कंपोनेंट एंड दिस इज अ कंपोनेंट एवरीथिंग इज अ कंपोनेंट कंपोनेंट यू नो दैट इट्स ए ब्लॉक और ए सेक्शन नाउ अगेन यू आस्क मी क्वेश्चन देन इफ ए सेइंग हेडर कंपोनेंट सपोज आई एम सेइंग हेडर कंपोनेंट देन व्हाट इज द बेनिफिट ऑफ यूजिंग हेडर कंपोनेंट इज सेम बेनिफिट ऑफ यूजिंग अ फंक्शन व्हाई यू आर यूजिंग फंक्शन इनसाइड अ इनसाइड अ क्लास बिकॉज़ यू आर डूइंग सम ग्रुप ऑफ टास्क राइट सपोज जस्ट एग्जांपल आई हैव अ फंक्शन कॉल्ड आर टू नंबर फंक्शन ऐड यू आर पासिंग नंबर 1 नंबर 2 then you are adding right you are adding here number 1 plus number 2 means i know that when i will call this add function this add function work is is going to add to number a same way if i am going to define a header function header component i know that i have to do all the header action inside a header component means same as if i going to create another function called subtract which is going to divide n to one n n one n two and in this case i want to minus n1 n2 i know that when i call the subtract it's going to subtract the things when going to add it's going to add the things same way when i going to call the header component it's going to display the header content content when i going to call the menu component it's going to do the menu work means you can see that each and every components is doing their own work and is totally isolated from the each and everything understand that way programmatically if you understand the a designing you have to understand this way to so understand this is my website this website is my class inside class i have a different different function my function is header function menu function filter function content function and each and every function doing their own work right same way i can say that it is a header component menu component filter component and content component whatever designing whatever logic i have to write i'll go and write inside this header only because i want to focus only header because if i don't focus on header that time i don't care about this menu and other things if any problem will going to happen then i go i will simply go to this function and do it same way inside a program because i know that all are your developers all you know that how the class and function work same way suppose if anything problem is happening in the add function then you are, you will go to sub, you will not going to subtract right you will go to add function because you know that by this function has a problem or this function getting some wrong data same way guys to making a header component i will add all the header code here in future if anything i need to change or anything i need to modify in this header component i'll simply go to header header component and do it here in this case i am not going to touch any other function and just imagine if i'll if i'll create a function called suppose um, function all and in this all if i go and create all the header part here and content part here menu part here everything i'm going to create just imagine if i'm going to change it i'll be able to go to all and check each and every line of code and going to change it the header part in this case to changing one part i have to traverse everything right i have to check all the things instead of doing all these things i can segregate the layout into different different chunks or different different part that part called the header component i hope you will understand if you compare between a function to a component then you have to understand the the separation guys you will ask me another question okay okay function is do is used to do the logical work right so add, add to number do some kind of recursive or you, you, you can you can you can do all any kind of operations like some logical operation and do guys the same thing also we can do using the header means we are going to create header as a component or header is a function which also going to create a 
which is going to create a logical operation for us but that logical operation it will be different as compared to a function because function is going to going to do some operation and return some data the data returning here you can return suppose suppose you are returning swing or you can return a you can return a number right or you can return an object you can return anything you can return anything right the same way if you compare a function return type to a component then you know that here here means in our program in our in our angular a component return type a html understand this way how a suppose this function return type is number right because n1 plus n2 is a number i can say that this return type is a number instead of a number if i go to return a html it should be html right html not rather than is a string right it's a html string and that guy is also if i going to create a component then component return type it's a html means i have to do all my operations here finally return the html and this html is going to display here got it now this is the use of a component now if you compare between component and a function you will see that there is no difference okay let me go to the chat any one questions okay someone question bharat is asking like can you use prime mg for html yes okay i will show you how to use prime mg uh nidhi is saying c and d not clear in our task okay nidhi i will explain this c and d when we are going to discuss that task implement the task can we put tamil yes we will add the tamil i, I told i will tell you tamil i will show you how to add your own language docker yes we are going to do the docker enable but i will show you how to enable a docker but we cannot go deeper this one we are we're going to create a docker can you send me the readme file on the chat yes i'm going to share this the deployment part which docker yes we are going to do the docker one to deploy but i will create a docker file i'll show you how to deploy uh, yes based on the core value should be deployed yes yes we are going to create a de uh, docker we are going to create a docker implementation okay can you use complete feature yes we are going to use complete feature yes um, someone said like okay component can you say like function which has own function or may depend on other function okay let me let me go that part i'll go one by one okay now guys you understand if i compare between a component and a function it is a basic example actually the real world is not like this one but i just compare if you because you already know programming due to that i told if you compare a function to a component both are working principle is same because function is doing some group of task same as component is doing some group of task what is group of task we don't know but it's going to do some task function also going to return some data is not void is there but function mainly used to return some data in this case function is returning number in my component instead of returning a number or string or object i want to return html simple right i can return html also now what operation i want to do i can do that and another part most important part that someone asked me can a function call inside function that's true because i can call add function inside the substrate function right a same way i can call a fun component inside another component now that part how to call how what is the use of that one i'll going to discuss it okay but then imagine once you create a function the function you can use everywhere same way guys once you create a component that component you can use everywhere it's up to you how we're going to use finally this component is a function just imagine that way component is a function and that function we are going to create everywhere right but guys just let's go to another part because we are focusing on component which is the basic one you have first understand clear about component part then we'll go understand about all the code stuff now guys you can see here i am doing the functional part here suppose this function also going to do some operation suppose it's going to do another complex operation it's going to do another complex operation then what will do i have to create another function right instead of doing creating function because i have a website inside the website i have a header component now just imagine this is the primary part now just imagine header component is doing lot of operations 
now doing lot of operation if i go and create everything in the same thing now i'll go into this part right just imagine as i told if a website is going to do all the operation in one function this will be more more problem right because every every time i we have to come here and see that everything is working or not same way when a component is there we are going to write some operation maybe the operation may be more much more right it's going to be much more in this case what will happen again it will be problem for us because if the code is going to increase the maintenance of the function will be maintenance of this component will be more in that case programmatically what we are doing we are making a component as a class okay understand we are making component as a class just imagine i tell that header component class header component here i am saying it's a function as why i am saying because i want to understand what is a function and component use but just imagine inside header component also i can return this way right return new header component class class component right i can create a class header same way guys i can create a class and that class i will treat as a component and whatever the complex operation i want to do i will do inside this component but this component return is html i'll show you don't panic i'll show you all this thing how this is work first imagine as i told header the component is a building block building block means it's a one 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 section and this section is going to work independently or isolated from other things anything i want to change that change i want to do this component is not going to affect other place okay i hope you able to understand the basic concept of a component right now let's go let's go to the next part then what is this app component why these files are created now let's understand as i told a component when you create a component that component different type is what component different type is html right component different type is html now whatever code you are going to write everything is going to display html because browser only able to understand html css javascript now every code whatever going to display in the browser that data is the html code right now defaultly my component is going to display the html now let's go and understand this first first what are all these things but you can see that we have a list of files here now let's go understand all each and every files in depth what is the use of each and every files okay now when i'm saying i want to create a component in your mind you have to think that i want to create a section or rather i want to create a section suppose i want to create a component then i want to create this site then header is a component menu is a component all the component the benefit of this component is the same as a class means when you want to segregate your everything in different 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 chunk chunk modules or different different operation how the class is working right each function is doing their own work same one guys in a website also if you think the your application is a class in this class all the each and every section is a one 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 function right the same way this is going to work now when you create a component you think that this is a section this section is contain a html and some logic what logic we'll discuss later okay the logic now let's go how a component looks like in angular when i'm talking i am to create a section or component how it looks like let's understand this part if you see this one when i create a component it's creating four files understand what are the four files to create the component okay now i'll go and start with the component okay what is the definition of component guys component is a building blocks which is used to create the ui understand this definition if you want to find all definition go to angular side you'll get other technical definition but just understand a component is a building blocks which is used to create the ui 
Understand? Means using the component, you can able to create the UI. UI means this section or anything. Now, when you creating component, component contain structure of components. Okay, what are structure of components? Once you create a component, a component contains basically four files. One is HTML files, two is CSS file, three is code file, four is test file this guy understand this guys when i will create a component my component contain a basically four files one is html which for design you already know that code css for style code for logic test case for unit test case understand because why we are creating these four things let me first understand these four files then we'll go and discuss uh we'll go and create a component okay now okay look into this header one this uh this one which one this this top one let me open in this case here you can see that here all the controls it may be a image text box button links we can design each and everything using the html right html is the only way we can design all these controls right but the styling part styling part means the background is blue and here the text is a little bit uh, blue and it is the white all these things we have to do in css as i told earlier if you remember everything is going to happen using the css and html due to that when you create a component component is going to give the html which is used for design the page design means it's going to give a option where you can add the all the controls okay now css which is used to style the controls right and second thing is code what is code you'll ask what is the code guys code means suppose just example if i go and type here something suppose, 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 suppose apple this apple source where is happening it's happening the header one right it's not happening in the here it's happening the header one means the operation the code when you type the appel what will happen all this code is going to happen where it's going to happening in this header one means the on typing what need to do when i select what need to do everything is happening in the header component in this case all my logic of the my core logic everything going to happen inside the code file right and what is the test case file guys because you all are developer you know that test case is used for test case the component same as you are using java or dotnet for writing in test case same as you are also going to write the test case for our application right test case for the component but how you know that which is the html file which is css code file let me go and understand the file naming convention for each and everything just example our component name is app component okay now the component suppose the component name is component name is app component just giving app component now understand this four part what are the file need to be create okay i understand this part now guys the html file we're going to create it's going to create the file name the component name app because of uh, our component name is app right component name app app dot component dot html guys component is the every time if you are going to create a component it's going to create a component okay and the component name is whatever component name you are giving suppose i am giving app suppose if you give xyz is you should going to add xyz dot component dot html okay now style same as it's going to add this prefix uh, this prefix every time dot css okay now for code dot ts right ts is typescript as uh, typescript extension got it here in your test case test case file dot spec dot ts spec 
for unit test case and dot ts for typescript already you know that ts stands for typescript understand this part guys when we create any component by default angular creating this four file structure what is the use of each and every structure i already discussed right but html how you know the html file the component name is app then it's know that app dot component html it is css app dot component css if code app dot component ts just case app dot component space ts let's back to this folder if you see this app app folder you can see that here we have same type of structure there i have app dot component html we are not going to discuss the content app dot component css app dot component spec dot ts okay then app dot component dot ts these four files are creating inside for a component to create a component then you have this four basic files is required okay this is the structure of an angular now let's go and discuss why this app is created why not other one and what is the content inside this each and every one okay now we'll discuss little 15 minutes we'll go for the lunch break once you back we'll go and discuss our main concept okay let's go and overview this component part we'll go for a lunch break okay now now guys let's go to first file this is called html file let's go to app.html file then you can see that once you run the application you can see that this is my output file right this is my output file now i can be able to see all these things what i'll do is they have written some html html uh, syntax here that i don't know because this is the default one they created what i'll do i'll control or remove it i'll remove all the app component file html the simple right welcome to angular okay now save it once i save you can see that let me see if it's running or not running you can see that it is displaying welcome to angular okay now we'll show how it's displaying we'll discuss that part but just see that this is displaying welcome to angular now in this case this is the page this is the HTML page. We can go and write our own HTML code. Suppose let me write it down. I, I, I'll put it inside the strong. Suppose I'll write a strong tag. Strong tag, you know that. Strong tag. So let me write H1 tag. All know H1 tag. Let me H1 tag. Suppose welcome to Angular. WhatsApp. Okay. You can see that, guys. Displaying Angular. Okay, this is the things we are able to understand. This is the Angular workshop. Now, whatever you will add here, it is displaying there. Why displaying? We will discuss later. How it displaying? Display later. But just imagine this is the page where you will go and add the HTML syntax. Okay, now let's go to the CSS page. As I told, when you create a component, that time by default, create a CSS file. If I go to CSS file, you can see that it's blank there's nothing is there suppose i want to add a css but if you if h1 is there i want to change the color to color to suppose red now if i save it you can see that it's going to display the color as a red i'll discuss because it is a basic c CS syntax i know it will be confusion for you but i just showing you i'll go and discuss everything in depth in later okay just imagine we have completed two things one is html css html for designing css for styling now let's go for code file code file is app component.ts if i go app component.ts you can see that this is your files but you can see that lot of things written here what is component export title we'll discuss this all these things in the later of the classes we'll discuss all these things okay now these files which files the ts file actual the code files okay this is all the code files all the code content here now let's go to the last file that is the specs file if you go to the spec file you can see that this is the unit test case code now it looks like a little bit complicated 
but don't think about all these things it's very simple one but it's there is some syntax is there to do all these things this is the this is our test case code we'll discuss this test case code tomorrow because these are the things you have to understand what is before each all these things but forget all this as of now now you can see that when i want to create a component when the create a component that time all these things are getting created okay all these things are getting created right now how these files are interconnected i will discuss after lunch right i will show that how the files are interconnected and how the files is working independently but let me understand this part suppose when i told suppose when i create a component that time we are creating these four files right now let's see how to create our own component okay by default we are creating this app component that is okay but suppose i want to create my own component suppose i want to create the header component just example i want to create a header component or i want to create a to do component how to create to do component let's go and use that one suppose let me go and create a component in the same folder i want to create a component to guys as i told this angular is a cli programming means command line line interface everything you want to do is a command only you cannot there is no specific gui to create a things you can create it but it's difficult but there is a command is there using that command you can write your program okay now let's go for that let me create my own component okay let me create a component called ng generate component called to do okay let me explain to generate a component okay first right generate own component guys this app component is app component is created by default okay we are not going to do anything here but first understand this is a default created suppose you want to create our own component because you have to create a own block suppose our component name is to do to create a component the type the things will be ng you know what ng stands for angular generate that generate is the used for generate otherwise you can use the short command called g i use g right then i want to create a component then i simply write component otherwise short command c okay who is going to write all this long command right i am using the short command then component name guys if you making this less than greater if you adding less and greater means you have to see that this is the dynamic one you have to give your own name i am saying that i want to create a component that component name is to do let's imagine to do once you type ng generate to do okay ng generate to do then click on enter it's going to create a component for me we'll see how the component looks like then we'll go and discuss other part okay i hope you will able to understand this part now you can see that once i create a to do just ignore this update part just create focus on the create part create is saying that four files got created consider four files got created what are the files it's saying that to do component html specs ts and css these four files are created if i go to this app folder you can see that there is another folder created that is called to do if inside the to do you can see that we have to use we have four files one is html files okay another one is css files and the specs files and we have a ts files you can see that we have different different files here now the questions okay these are the different different files how these things are interconnected how the things you know that okay for this component this is my html for this component it is my css how know that it is specs how we know and go to use this one how how the application know that all these things okay these things guys we will discuss after the lunch but i told you now let me recap what i will cover i have discussed what is a component i have also discussed what is the you when you creating any component what are the files are generating what is the use of each and every every uh, files and what is the files name and i discuss how to create your own component okay later we will go and discuss one by one component using the different different life cycle okay now as you know like last uh, last time we discussed about this um, component creation right how to create a component component and how to use this one 
okay and uh, what we're going to do now we'll go and understand this little bit more structure of this one okay now now let's go to the main.ts file okay we we'll understand this how this is working means when you run this ng serve then when i'm running this application on browser how it's displaying the page whatever we have designed here okay now let's go and do on this part Now let me run this application. You can see that our to do application is there. Okay. Now it's displaying the content. Now why this content is how this content is displaying? Okay. Now let's go understand the execution of an Angular. How an Angular is execute. Guys, let's go to the main.ts file. Now as I told earlier, we have two important files in our application. One is main.ts another one is index.html okay now first understand what is the use of main.ts when any application any component anything you are writing any code you are writing inside the angular application all the application is going to start from this main.ts file okay understand when anything it's not only this one anytime our any code we have written inside this app app folder the execution starting point is main.ts always remember main.ts is the starting file where is going to application going to start okay means when my application open the browser inside the browser my execution of the application is going to start from this main.ts okay now let's understand what is this main.ts I know that you know in any program there is a main function right it may be java it may be c sharp any application you know that is a public static void main the function is there which is the entry point of your application right any fun any uh, programming okay same way in angular the main function is main.ts that you can find inside the src in src we have main.ts file right dot th is stands for ts typescript I will explain what is this import all these things we will discuss but first understand how this thing work if you see the line number 11 you can see that is saying that platform browser dynamic bootstrap module and app module just ignore all this thing only focus on this app module okay first only focus on this app module if you are able to see my screen right okay 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 thank you okay now here what happening only focus this app module now when the application start okay when the application start that time it's going to call the app module now we'll understand what is called app module okay now let's go and go to this app file app folder inside that we'll focus on this app module file app module.ts now you can see that there is some code is written forget about this code whatever the written just forget about this code and only focus about this part app module okay this is the app module and in the main.ts we are also using app module which is the class two class we are using this is the class we are declaring here and this is the class we are using here okay now when application start this main.ts file calling the app module file if you go to the app module file the app module file is saying what are the component i am using forget about this tag what are they using just focus on this part i am saying that in my application i am using all this component means you have to register your component means suppose you know that you have a suppose a public in your code writing public static void main right you are writing in java code or any code main main function and inside that you are calling the code right you are supposed to initialize a class or you are doing any kind of operation it's up to you this main function i can tell that this main function is the this main function and 
the application is going to start from one class like right? this is a modular approach i'll tell you what is modular approach but understand main file is the main function add your java inside there you know that you are going to call any class right? suppose my class name is app module my class name app module and what will do app module object equal to new app module right then you are going to call the functions okay means obj dot something you are going to call so this is the pseudo code okay forget about this one this is a, it's not actually valid but this is a code you are going to perform in the java guys same thing if you compare the same thing is happening inside this angular just imagine the main function is main dot ts just imagine bootstrap module is the function which is the main function which is calling which class is calling the app module class same as if you go if i compare this two here you can see that my function name main function is comes to bootstrap module function in a bootstrap module function i am creating the object of app module same i am passing the app module means when application got start it's calling the app module again this app module itself a class then this app module is going to create its own functions and own methods right same way it's going to call in that way means first i'll go for this app module then app module is going to call its own thing now the question is why this name is app module why this name is not simple app or anything else why this name is app module guys angular follow the modular approach i tell you what is a modular approach in java you are creating a different different class library or that library is called as different different uh, like jar file you are creating right and that file you are going to reference to your application what is the use of creating that one the use of creating that one means when you're creating any external library or external module means whatever because you are segregating your code right suppose you are developing one application and that application containing your api layer one database access layer one entity layer one business logic layer you can define n number of layer why you are creating n number of layer because you want to create the application more decouple decouple means nothing going to be related to each and everyone each and going to run its own uh, like library own object everything is own right okay same structure is followed by angular because just imagine if you if i show this application to you just imagine how big the this flipkart site how big the amazon site and you can see that lot of large site available now market you can see day to day life you are seeing a lot of large large website guys if you don't go for a modular approach the problem is maintenance will be more right if you don't go for a modular approach then maintenance will be more my what i'm saying here suppose i am in a product page i will create a product module suppose i am in cart page i will create a cart module suppose i am in home page i'll going to create a home module means module is a logical separation of your data right suppose how we are creating a different 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 layer of application library same as in angular suppose you want to create an application that application by default a modular application so everything are going to create inside a module now guys you understand the why the use of module because module is going to create the loosely coupling to the different 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 layer now by default angular giving us a default module that module name is app module means this module is going to be your primary module for your application same as suppose you are developing spring boot application or you are de developing dotnet core application your primary application you treat as this is a app module where you are doing all your uh, http calls all your like defining all your like you can say that all your anything any uh, 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 controllers any api endpoint whatever defining just imagine that is the app module and that is the primary module for your application right now each and every angular application that contain a default modules okay that contain a default modules same way guys you can see that uh, uh, we have first when angular create a application that time they are creating the app module is the default module now now you have a, another question okay what the module content when you define a module what the module is content 
let tell you what is a module content the module as of now for example its content a component because just imagine i'll tell you one thing i'll let you draw something you will understand what is a module should be content now just example this is our website okay this is our oops no no forget about this one this is our page as of now in this page what we are going to do we are going to display all the products all the products this is for all products okay all products now guys after displaying all product if i click on one of the product now it's going to another screen right it's going to another screen now in that screen is displaying the product details and displaying the product details right means if i click it here if i go there it's displaying the product details now guys you can see this one in this case all sorry this is all product sorry the all products and on click of this all products okay in click of this all products we are going to the product details and product details you are also going to display product details same as suppose i am in this page if i click on this page it's going to open a new page and displaying the all the product is the details view in this case guys if you compare between these two this page and this page the component is different means in this page we are displaying one normal view if you go to open details view, you can see that we have a slider here we have a add to cart we have more information we have a rating lot of things available here right now guys in this page my component is different in this page my components are different my, my section is different due to that what i will do i will create two modules one is uh, i will create a product module i will create another product details module because i want to create two different 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 totally separation because when i am on this page on click of this page then i'll going to load this product details right in this case in this in this page i have different 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 kind of section right if you compare to this page to this page you can see that is totally different in this case what i'll do i'll create two modules one is product details modules another one is the product list module right in this case product list module contain this component and product details component is contained this component in this case i tell that each and every module contain a component means in my module app module i have a default component called app component this app component is the primary component for the application for each and every angular application app component is the primary component inside this component you are going to render all the component now you'll ask me question why this app component is primary guys let back to the site guys if i if i told you okay this is a component this is a component all this component but if you, if you remember initially i told the questions if it initially i told like if i going to combine each and every component then only it's going to create a web page right if if you see this one combination of a multiple component making a web page same way guys making a web page means this each and every component is going to play somewhere right then only going to create a component that's the reason app component is the primary component means everything you want to display in the website you have to add it here it may be tag it may be your component anything everything is going to add it here means component is going to add into module then module going to display the component okay this is the way it is going to work we'll discuss everything later what is the use of import provider all this thing we'll discuss later but as of now you have to understand module is a segregation of like how you're getting a layer and that layer is going to call inside this main.ts where the, the main.ts is going to call that time it's going to add it's going to display the content now now also you're going to ask me a question okay in my application i have a two component one is an app component, another to do component. Then how the app module know that I have to display this um, app component, not to do component, why it's not displaying to do component. Now guys, you can see that line number 18 is called bootstrap. If app module is saying that which component is our primary component, two things you have to mark it here. One is primary module 
another one is primary component main dot ts is saying that who is your primary module but this r part module is saying that who is your primary component suppose i have to do i have this um, to do an app component suppose i want to change to do uh, app component to to do now to do is my primary component means i have to display to do as a default if i save it let me show that is to display or not you can see that it is displaying nothing is displaying there is no content means i am saying here when you are adding any component the bootstrap matters bootstrap means is saying that app component is the primary component to display by default app will not be there you no need to change anything it is just a component okay now we spend a little bit more time on component description and all these things but let's go and discuss and design the component okay now our primary component is the to do because we are we are going to develop the to do application right we going to develop the to do application let's go on first design the to do application guys you can see here this is running which component this is running the app component before going to do let's discuss about the index.html file because this is the main one as i told for code perspective main.ts is the entry files this is going to be compiled our code and display the code display the logic but after compile the code where to display the display part is index.html index.html is the file okay which is used to which is used to display our content means if you see here to do app right click and go for view source you can able to see that this is our index.html file now if i open this index file you can see that doc type this is a basic html syntax right and you can see that its title is to do app you can see that title is to do app same way you can see all the code and everything here okay now now but you can see line number 11 something they have added called app root started app root end okay now we'll discuss this part what is the use of app root lot of thing we will discuss but before understanding this part we have to first understand the code of a component how the component you know that what is the component content but we have to go and understand this component structure what a component what is this at the rate what is all these things we have to first understand this part okay now let's go to this app component ts file okay this app component ts file you know ts stands for typescript okay now let's go and understand this part first what is this what is this import we will discuss import later but first understand component guys at the rate component now we have to understand what is this at the rate component is there means as i told every component it's a class if you are going to develop any component if you want to add any component each and every component it's a class okay it's a normal class now I'll tell me what is a class before going that let's go and learn a little bit more about the typescript and javascript okay now we'll explain everything this one okay but before going that we have to understand what is the class all these things we want to discuss so let me create a folder guys here uh, let me create a folder called new folder let me create that folder name is suppose javascript okay i'll i'll learn you a little bit more about javascript if people don't know javascript this is the basic things you have to know suppose let me create suppose app.js okay now let's understand what is the javascript how the javascript syntax should be written and how you should be know what is the variable declaration for loop while loop do loop you have to understand you know because i am not going to in depth of that javascript but you have to know that basic of a javascript syntax that is going to help you to write the code guys c sharp or java these are the type safety language means that when you declare any variable or anything you must have to specify the type of the variable like example suppose variable suppose you are talking about variable suppose in the java you want to declare a variable what will do i will you will declare int suppose age equal to 20 
same way suppose you are declaring a string variable you write string name equal to suppose angular right this is the way you declare a variable in java this is the java or i can tell that this is the java sorry, or c sharp declaration of declaring a variable but guys in javascript there is no there is no concept called as a data type means this is not a type safety language javascript is not type safety language means you are not going to define any variable with a data type means i cannot define here int a is equal to 20 is not a valid syntax because javascript does not contain any type of data type now there is a problem right if there is no data type then this is a object type i can ask i can able to add any type of data right now let's understand how to declare a variable okay to declare a variable we have three way okay what are three way we have to use the var we have to use the let we have to use the const we have to use the const but each and everyone is used different different but let's go and understand this part to declare a variable we have to use var keyword var keyword is used to declare a variable okay means where suppose i will define age equal to 20 means you know that age is a variable which type is you don't know i also don't know but value is 20 but guys in stronger type programming language like java and c sharp before declaring any variable we are type the we are define the data type then only we are going to assign the value based on the data type but in case of javascript what happening the data type is going to assign based on the value means the the assignment of data type is dependent on the pure on the value means here we know that name should be contained string because name is a string type but here the problem is the age we are defining is so saying as a number but if i go to change the name to 20 here as a suppose if i change the name to suppose angular then you can see that age become a string means based on the value the data type is going to be changed this is the one of the changes if you compare between a strongly type to it to the javascript first got it based on the value data, data type going to be assigned okay now let's go to next part suppose let me assign 20 here now i know that age is a 20 again if i go and say age is is a angular this is also possible because as i told here you can see that age is displaying number but it is a string because in javascript when you declare a variable based on the value only the data type is going to change here you can see that this is a number but again it's a string okay again it's a string same guys if i go and say age is equal to false then you can see that it's a boolean got it same again if i go and age equal to ra it's now ra and say again age equal to object it's now object you can see that same variable based on the type the data type getting the like the value the data type of this variable getting changed this is the like changes this is the beauty you can say beauty or disadvantages of the our javascript means based on the value now you can change the change the value based on the value the data type going to be assigned okay now you can see that this is the problem right problem means i am saying that a should be a number but due to age is giving flexibility you can change any type i suppose you have you are expecting your function going to should pass a number but your you are again changed to string your function is not going to throw an error because this function you can pass any type of data example let's this is a data type variable okay same way we can also define a variable using the let keyword let name 
guys let and bar both are equal the difference difference is only one difference i'll tell you later first imagine using the var using the var you can also declare a variable using let also you can declare a variable so let name is equal to angular same way you can change the name to suppose 20 course then change to course same way you can change anything up to you now let's guys another variable equation called const i think able to know that what is the use of const const means it's a constant same as let difference is constant we cannot change the constant suppose suppose called um suppose fee equal to suppose 2000 now the fee you cannot change to 3000 because it's a constant you cannot change to 3000 okay, because fee is a constant if you do that it's going to throw an error but in variable we can change the value as much as we can but in case of const we cannot change the value once you declare means it's a declare but the question is what is the difference between age what is the difference between sorry bar and the let the so guys as of now we are not going to discuss that that much that much depth but understand you have to understand that var is a global variable whereas let is a scope variable i'll understand what is a global variable or scope variable later of the class but let's understand var will declare a variable using the var it's a global variable and the let is a scope or local variable this difference i'll show you on example but as of now just remember these two part var and let example but going forward we are going to use let only we are not going to var okay guys this is the simple declaration of a variable inside the uh, in the javascript same way after uh, after variable we will learn we have to learn operator right in the programming world also learning operator right you know already operator plus plus operator minus arithmetic operator uh, and operator or operator less than greater than divisible multiplication i think you already know all this operator right the programming operator you already know that this is the operator we can use in that application third one the conditional statement guys conditional statement you already know that if else if suppose fee equal to equal to 2000 what i will do else what you will do this is same as c syntax or i think in java also we are doing the java c or any programming also we are writing the same if and else right if and else programming okay same ways we have if and else if if you know else if also right if else if same as our c and c plus plus right now go to switch case. Okay, switch case. You all know the switch case. Switch. We can pass the switch here. Suppose pass P and we can compare case. Suppose 2000. What you will do? And you know everything we have a break. And same, same as we have multiple case. I'm just remembering all the syntax. You will not find anything. Then default. I hope you will already know about this thing. How can perform arithmetic operator on age? Okay, arithmetic operator means guys, suppose you have two number. Suppose let number one equal to 10 and let number two equal to 20, right? Suppose let sum equal to n1 plus n2. Got it? I think if already people know all this arithmetic operator you are learning the java on c sub anything you see also you know that this is the use right arithmetic operator hello sir yeah yeah actually we, we have age in uh, different data types right so if yeah. you use age instead of uh, n is equal to 10 if you use n is equal to age and if you perform the operation arithmetic uh, arithmetic operation how can we set the values for this it's, it's a, a number type it's a string type how can we perform yeah that addition? That will show. suppose this addition this addition suppose this is your n is it to, suppose it's a b c d so a b c d then it's a concatenation okay 
will have to do 10 ABCD will come. Why? Because addition, you know that plus operator is used to addition the two string, addition the number, right? Addition it will be number or a string. It will be string, it will be going to concatenation. If you have number, it's going for addition. Okay. What if, uh, what if yeah. uh, let n3 is equal to false, then what will happen? Yeah, let me show that one first. Yeah. Okay, just a second. Let to go to inspect and go to console. We'll do it here. Suppose let n1 equal to 10. Let n2 equal to ABCD and let n3 equal to false. Now let's sum sum. Okay. Uh, suppose n1 plus n2 plus n3 be that. Now everything they are treated as a string only. Okay. This way you can do all this kind of stuff, right? Like suppose if n1 n2 is a number, it's going to do the number. Now if you are going to combine other things, they are going to treat this one only. This is you can explore, okay? You can do an explore, you can define the variable, you can do all the explore, whatever you want to do, you can do that. I just told you how to write the code there, okay? Now, okay, this is the way you can do the operations. Now guys, switch case, you already know that, switch case will pass the operation, we will pass the case, we will pass the options, and you have to do all the case check, whatever you are going to do that. This is the basic switch case. This is the if else already you know that if else if else or if and if nested if also you can do that let go for loop right what are the different about loop we have for loop while loop do while loop you are all are using this one right now let's go for for loop suppose i want to uh, display 10 to 1 to 10 then simple simple for let i equal to 0 for let, let i equal to 0 i is less than 10 i plus plus you already people are using this this kind of loop right Oops, sorry, i equal to 0 okay this kind of we are also using i equal to 0 i less than 10 i plus plus we are also using this one let instead of let you people are using int right integer i equal to 0 i less than 10 while loop guys same way suppose uh, uh, let um, uh, suppose um, count equal to zero while uh, count is uh, greater than 10 uh, then do then count plus plus see you already know that this syntax simple syntax same as c syntax only okay, same as go for the do while do while do file count greater than 10 and you have to do count plus plus okay this is the way you can able to write do while for loop on these things right okay then uh, this is the basic of this uh, for loop and while loop i think you people already know these things i am not going to spend much more time on this and let's go and discuss about a little bit more thing about that uh, how to declare an array and how to declare an object this is the and about the functions okay these three are the basic importance of uh, uh, like javascript then we will go move to the typescript part okay now guys you know that suppose you are declaring an array in uh, in your um, uh, java or c sharp you have to declare this type of like suppose suppose names or you can define the value here right or you can define suppose to define your uh, value n1 and so on right but guys here there is nothing like that okay to define a array in javascript is very simple guys the array means here that is in suppose in java or c sharp you declare an array you can have to give the size of an array right size of array means suppose you, are, you can give uh, 5 or 10 or something but if you go for the list it may be R, it may be link list or it may be array suppose normal list you can know that it's a dynamic array right dynamic array means we can add n number of items to an existing array there the size is not fixed like list by default the array in javascript is a list means there is no fixed size you can add more size you can remove the more size this is called dynamic 
uh, array means dynamic linked list means it's going to be add multiple item dynamically to define a, a array suppose i want to define a number of edges then i suppose number of numbers nums then what you can define you can define a variable name you know let is used to define a variable the variable name you can simply add the square bracket the square bracket is used for the define an array suppose i want to add i want to add define the number so i will add here 10 comma 20 comma 30 same way right means my number is an array uh, nums is an array which which contain the four items same way guys i can able to add the items how to add an array like how to add the items how to remove the items we'll go to discuss when going to implement this thing but just remember to define an array we have to define the this way the variable name and the square bracket how to add and remove that i will discuss later but just understand this part okay now guys in other way suppose you want to define an object okay you know object in a normal class object which contain an attribute as well as a function now same way to define an object in javascript we have to use the curly bracket suppose i have to define an object called employee emp then i have to define a curly bracket the curly bracket is used to define the object you know object contain a member variable and member function let me define a member variable suppose let me define suppose name name equal to suppose suppose name name equal to suppose um, um, angular sorry I define this way name angular variable name the member variable name colon the value same way i will define another member variable suppose called age suppose age called 20 suppose define another variable suppose called address address called suppose hyderabad same way you can define the different 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 this type of object means this is the employee object and this is a different 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 attribute inside an object same as a class suppose you are define a class class contain different different attribute or different different property same way you can define an employee class employee class contain a different different attribute and each and every attribute that is a value okay okay this is a name variable value is in a string age address this way we want to define and finally we're going to discuss about function okay guys just know this syntax and actually implementation i'll show you when going to develop the application okay now let's go for the function you know what is the function you already know the function or method whatever you can say that you know the function is used to write to do a some specific task let me create a function to create a function in javascript we are using the function keyword now this function keyword is used to define a function function and function name so function name let me go try the add now this add to you know the function variable this is the round bracket to define a function then we have to start call back and start call back at end which is the scope of the function and let me define one some variable which is 20 plus 30 okay means i have defined a function called add which is going to add two number and this is the basic one finally suppose i want to return this sum then you can simply go and write return sum you already know that return statement return statement is used to return the value to a function then add is a function add add when going to call the add function is going to return the sum if i want to call the add function simply go and call add it's going to display it's going to execute this function same way suppose i want to parameterize the function then i can pass the parameter here i can pass n1 comma n2 i have two parameter here i will pass n1 plus n2 got it simple parameter i am passing function parameter now same is going to do that this is the way you can create a function okay guys these are the basic javascript code to start a javascript you must have to know this thing i am just re recap all these things that you have to be when writing the code you must have to know that guys, apart from this function also now let's go and discuss about a little bit more about the typescript this is the javascript code okay now we'll go and discuss about the typescript how typescript is going to looks like okay now as i told the typescript extension is dot ts right typescript extension is dot ts now whatever going to write a typescript is going to extension ts now first understand why this typescript required 
because the same thing we can able to do using the javascript then why typescript require guys typescript is developed by microsoft and this is the super set of the, the super set of javascript means it's actually doing the same javascript code but they are just giving some different different type of abstract what is the different different features i'm going to tell you if you go to our primary example you can see that if you see this example you can find that based on the value data type going to be changed means a user can able to pass any type the result may be wrong result may be anything but user is able to pass the type because javascript is not a type safety language right in this case what will happen now we cannot specify the type we know we have a type it's a number type it's a string type it's a boolean type it's a array type object type but javascript is we there is no concept called a type now what happened microsoft developed a new language called typescript which is specially used for define the type of a variable or type of a class or type of anything whatever defining inside the javascript you want to declare a type tell you suppose for about other things let me define here suppose i am declaring a variable and that variable let me add i am declaring a variable that variable i want to specify it's a number then what i will do guys i will define a variable using let let is a variable let is a using the let suppose called h and i am specific h as a 20 right but here what I'll do, I'll go into assign data type called number. Means I'm saying age is a variable which type is a number and value is 20. Okay. You can see this is the pretty much same as int age equal to 20. But syntax is variable name and colon the data type. What is the data type you want to specify the data type? But guys, understand one thing. In c sharp or java we have a dedicated type for a whole number as well as a fractional number suppose integer or big int or big integer or big int is specially used for integer type whole number right for a fractional number you are using float or decimal right float or decimal for the fractional number but in case of javascript there is no concept of a float and decimal point means decimal data type means there is only data type called number means number can store big int number also can store small int 32 bit integer as well as number can also store the whole number as well as a fractional number means this age now looks like a whole number if i go on type 22.33 now it's a fractional number means the same number type is going to store the multiple type of the number it may be floating point it may be whole number got it there is no dedicate type for the number dedicate type for the float and the integer both are same type is called number number it may be whole number it may be fractional number got it now now you can do it i have you can see here i have declared a variable called age type is number a same way if i go and define type equal to suppose angular it's going to throw me an error it's showing me an error what is showing me an error if you mouse over here it's showing that type string is not assigned to type number but you can see our older example in this example you can see that here i can assign age to angular but i am not getting any error why not getting an error because this is a javascript but in case of typescript what happening when i am assigning a number to a string or string to a number then it's going to throw me an error guys this is the typescript means typescript is same as your javascript but difference is everything you can go here you have to declare a type of the variable let's go it suppose you want to declare a function suppose i am declare a function same function called add now in add what i am going to do i want to add to number now you can if you see this example i can pass n1 and n2 okay in n1 and n2 i can pass to 10 here i can also pass false here right because there is no changes is because it's not it's, it's an anonymous type it's any type but in case of this function add you can see that i before declaring a variable you have to specify the type 
suppose i will specify n is also a number and n2 also a number in this case i want to let let sum equal to n1 plus n2 suppose i want to re return the number then i have to specify return type i have to specify return type also a number after function you have to specify return type suppose in a function in a java you have to write you writing suppose int add then you pass int n1 int n2 then inside the code you're returning the uh, it is some means are defining integer as a return type here if you don't specify the type if you don't return it's a void type you all know that the specify the integer type means this function must be returned some value right in this case i will go and return sum got it guys this is the way we can add the function to call the function if you go and call the function add i can pass 10 if i going to pass false it's going to throw me an error because it's saying that it's saying that false boolean is not assignable type of number right what is means if you see this javascript and the uh, typescript the difference is in javascript we are not specifying the type and typescript we are specifying everything as a type that is called the typescript guys okay now i uh, think sorry, basic... Haranjan, yeah. uh, sorry to interrupt you uh, can you go for .js file or dot .ts file uh, in line number 19 uh, uh, after declaring the uh, function and one number comma n2 so number uh, you inherit the number class here i cannot understand 19 line actually this one no 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 let me understand if i go for this function okay let me go here okay let me call the function call r2 okay just example in the javascript if you see this app.js file i have n1 and n2 two argument right because we are not defining in type here parameter but in this case we can pass a 10 also i can pass a false also i can pass a string also right i can pass anything anything here right right because we are not defining the type but right. here i am saying i am defining a function the type is n1 n2 but i am specify the type I'm saying that the type n1 is a number, n2 also a number. In this case, if I go and pass 10 and false here, it's going to show me the, the compile time error, right? Because this is the Boolean value. Got it? Means I, I'll show you how to define a type of an argument also inside using the TypeScript. Got it? Now, guys, this is the basic things. You have to learn only one thing, whatever you are doing in JavaScript, same thing also you're going to do in TypeScript. The different, the one thing you can do extra is in the TypeScript, if you're defining any variable, any functions, anything you're defining, you have to specify the type of a value. Okay. To specify what is the type you are passing and what a type you are using. Okay. Now let's go and focus on this component part. Okay. Let me go and paste it here because I'm going to share this code all of you. Now ignore this export as of now we'll go and discuss about export later but just focus on the class guys same way how we are defining a class in java or c sharp same way define a class we have a class operator class keyword class and class name and we write your code now as i told our application contain an app component okay this app component is a class and this is a class but top of that you can see that we are using the other component decorator lot of syntax we are written here now let's go understand what is this other component and wh what is the use of selector and template you are a lot of thing now if you guys see this thing initially i told when we are creating any component by default this four files getting created right ts specs html css now will understand how these files are interlinked each other means how the compiler know that this css or this html belongs to this component or not okay now case in angular to define any component any component means any kind of component you define you have to use the other component decorator guys this is a decorator means it's making a class as a component because everything in the javascript in everything in angular is a class it may be component it may be module it may be anything 
each treat as a class everything is a class i will explain what is the use of class later but just understand everything in java in, in our angular is a class only okay now then how we know that this class is a component or not understand this part how you know that this class is a component or not guys to understand this class is a component or not for that reason angular is giving us predefined decorator decorator means it's a metadata for this class means i'm saying that if i'll go and use are the red component in top of a class then this class is belongs to a component class means to make a class a component then you have to use the other decorator same as guys if you are a spring boot or dotnet developer you know the spring boot we are developing an any controller that controller is going to extend from somewhere right then only you know that this is a controller inside that you are writing all the get and post method same as in the angular i have defined a class how i know that this class is a component or not for that there is a predefined decorator metadata is available called component other component makes a class as a component because i can define any class right because any class is not a component class to define a component class we have to use other decorator other component this is the predefined syntax which is given by angular which makes convert a class to component but let's go understand the inner one what are the things say? this class contain this attribute the component content this attribute basic attribute what is the attribute first is selector template url and style url we'll discuss selector lastly i will go and discuss about the last and let's focus about these two part let's go understand what is template url guys guys as i told when you create any uh, like any kind of component by default html file created right then how the component know that who what so when this is going to call this component right how it know that what is the html file for this component then for that reason they are using the template url template url is a syntax which is used to define the html file means, means you can see that i am defining app.component.html is saying that this is the html file for this component same guys I have to specify what is the style sheet file for for this component now you can see that it's saying that app.component.css this is the comp style sheet file for this component now you can see that two things will be linked one is html file will be linked another file is css file got link but only specs file got let that is not required because specs file is going to run independently there is no link with this component it's just a test case execution due to that we have three things is important one is ts file html file css file then you see that in this here template url is going to define the html file for the component style sheet url is going to define the style sheet of the url style sheet of the component same way if i go to the to do component if i click on to do component ts you can find that template url it says that to do component html style url to do component css got it two things now now let's focus on the selector first we'll understand what is a selector okay guys let's back to the our normal html syntax let me create one html file okay we'll understand this part let me create one html file suppose app.html okay now let me add the html file syntax okay now guys i am adding here paragraph okay or i am adding suppose let me add here h1 tag simple one h1 tag hello guys when i will open this application just a second see this one see this hello where is the hello content because i am written this hello inside this h1 now let's go to the view source we will understand this part means you can see that in this case i have added h1 tag here means browser know that when i will enter a when i going to add one h1 tag it's going to display 
this way right suppose here instead of h1 i'm going to write suppose italic i i stand for italic right just as of now you can see here it's going to change italic means understand guys this thing if you understand the core part of a web application you have to able to understand now the selector part means this i this h1 or this h2 or h5 or strong tag or deep tag any tag you have to know in html all these tag are predefined right predefined means if i go and write something called high inside the strong means browser is going to create a strong element here right it's a bold element here means somewhere inside the memory somewhere inside this browser is written the code right if i go and put something inside the strong it should be displayed as a bold if something i'll press inside the i italic it's going to display as italic if i going to say if i going to add anything inside a h1 it's going to display a little bit bigger let's understand this way in this case you have to find the one thing like this this i h1 strong all this tag is going to exist inside this browser let me do one thing let me write uh, one tag called suppose um, uh, suppose uh, test test and go write high test are you able to see anything because all of you know that test is not a valid html syntax right all of you know that test is not a valid html syntax means when i go and write a test syntax here my browser is not able to understand the test right means guys browser only understand those html tags which tag is present inside the browser can you understand these things closely because this is the important part as a web developer maybe full stack developer you must have to know that how the tag is work means when i going to add the i h1 strong tag then a browser inside the memory they know that okay it's is the h1 tag this is the hello this is the i tag this is the uh, strong tag based on that i going to render the data but when i add a test tag here means all of you know that test is not a valid html tag um, valid html uh, tag and it's not going to work now this is the origin of our prime mg so this is the origin of our angular component based development means whatever you are going to add here this tag is going to convert the content right suppose if i going to add hello this i tag is going to convert this tag to italic if i going to high inside the strong this high, strong tag is going to convert this high to uh, bold a same way if i going to create a component and that component name is header then i will add going to add a component here the question is whatever tag i going to define here the tag must have to understand by a browser but thing is if i go going to give my name here test suppose if i going to give suppose sinu tech uh, tag here browser don't know sinu tech uh, tag suppose you are going to give your name also browser don't know your name also browser only know this standard html syntax guys the things will be now we are going to create our own syntax or own tag understand that part means how the strong means just imagine if you are developer or imagine strong is a predefined tag predefined tag means someone is, is there to write the code for strong right someone was there who is write the code for strong the same way if you are going to define a component we are going to write a code for that component then when run that application browser know that okay the test is a html tag guys this is the same as your selector means selector is the html tag representation means whatever selector you are going to give it here this is treat as a 
element is treated as a tag same as your i tag or h1 tag means i can say that app root is a html tag okay app root is a html tag then what app root is going to contain whatever app root is going to add in this html file that all the content is going to display inside the app root understand guys how this is working means you have to compare between the predefined tag to your defined tag the only difference is strong is a defined predefined that is okay but app root you have defined your you have defined your own tag and that tag what is going to display this is going to display whatever you have added inside the html means i can say that this is a function you are calling and inside the function the return type is the html guys for that reason you can see that if i go to this industry html file here they are using app root means this is the pri primary component for the application means this is the way you can use the root now you'll ask me a question how browser know that app root is there that is the use of angular angular is giving a search mechanism angular is going to convert this tag to the html tag that part we are not going to discuss as of now but also imagine this is the custom tag whatever going to define then selector is the selector is the area where you're going to define your own html selector or html tag okay now same way guys guys if we go to this to do app you can see that this is also going to contain the selector called app to do this is not a selector this is just html tag right this is the html tag now we'll go and understand how to use this html tag i hope you able to understand the selector part right selector is same as your html tag but these tags are predefined now we are defining your own tag got it now now this part you able to understand this part now whatever going to add this is the tag this is the template this is the css and this is my code whatever going to add the code is going to work it here right now due to that if i'm going to add anything inside this here when i run the application it's going to display me that one i'll show you the inspect element let me go and click on click on inspect and inspect is used to inspect the html all the browser stuff inspect if you click on element you will see the structure you have to see one thing i have a app root right app root is the primary root this app root contain h1 why why h1 because app root is the app root syntax and this is going to contain the h1 tag that's why it is displaying the h1 tag here but this app root is not a html uh, syntax but this is our browser syntax right this, this is our angular syntax this syntax is going to handle by the angular itself okay we'll discuss other thing later in depth part but as of now you are able to understand how to define a things now okay the things is like app root is our primary sorry app component is our primary component means by default is going to run it here now the things will be how we can go and display this component to do component inside this space now for that reason what will go please go to this to do component copy this selector selector is the main part of the any angular application because this is the actual tag go to this component.ts component component html and here you have to you have to just paste it as a tag understand this way you have to use as a tag means i am just using that, that this this is a tag tag contain another tag means same way inside a div you can add a another div guys same way one component i can add a another component right because if you if you know the still syntax a div also you can add another div inside div also i can I, I can add a paragraph i can paragraph also i can add a strong same way i can do lot of things guys same way i inside a component this is a component inside component i am using another component okay use a component this is a tag you have to use now let me save it once you save you can see that display to do works why display to do works because if you go to this html you can see that it's displaying to do works 
right this is the way you have to display the component i hope you people will understand the basic of a component now let's go and focus the other part that is the how to do how to develop our own part one part means guys whatever we have discussed that time right let me save it uh, this to do app okay this to do app we are going to create as of now now let's go and create this component enter component guys before going into component let's go and divide this component multiple part what is the multiple part guys now you can see that we have a list here right we have a list here we have a add here and there is a lot of operation going to add the latter now first design this stuff then we'll go and add the functionality now what we'll do i'll create another folder here let will create suppose um, called suppose folder is there okay no not required that will be there only now now guys i want to add another component what is the comp why am i adding the component i want to make this header party totally different this header need to be totally different for that reason i want to add another component called ng generate component you know ng generate component is for generate the component then suppose i want to add the component called suppose to do add okay to do add simply click on plus now it's going to create a to do for me it's going to create a add component for me let's see okay you can see that to do add component got created now we'll go and use this to do add component guys understand this flow to do works is used inside the to do works we are going to sorry we are going to add to do add to do list to do source lot of thing going to add same way let me create another component called ng generate component to do list understand this part to do list is going to is for the list of operation okay now got it guys when you developing an application make sure that you have to proper plan the component you can divide any application to n number of component it's up to you how you will go and organize your application component okay now let's go to this part now to do is the main inside to do we are going to add to do add to do list and let's go to to do inside to do what i'll do i'll add a div okay i'll add a div then suppose i want to add to do add app to do add what is app to do add guys this to do add is the to do add component. If I go to to do component, you can see to do add component, right? Now, same way, I'll add another div. I am not focusing guys any CSS anything. We're going to focus CSS later. After completion of all the functionality, we'll go and focus the uh, uh, UI. Then app to do list. Okay. Now, if you see, save this one, you can see that. I can able to see to do add works to do to list if you see the structure you go to inspect and if you go to element you can see that app root is the primary one right app root is the primary inside the primary we have a app to do inside the app to do we have a app to do add inside the app to do add we have a app to do list same way guys you can able to add a number of component here right this is the structure now we will go and focus on the add add one okay now as i told in the add part what we're going to do we are going to add a text box okay if you see we have a text box and a button okay for that reason let me add a text box for text box we are going to use input input is used to add a text box same as we're going to add a button suppose called add followed about everything ui all these things save it now you can see that i have a text box i have a button now on a click of add i want to add the item that is different part forget about this thing now same way if i go to the to do list i have to display the list of item here right i have to display if i go and display 
the list of item here okay list of item let me save it the list of item now this is the pretty much about our ui forget about the uh, styling part styling we are going to integrate the bootstrap later but just imagine hi now what guys you want to do when i click it here and I click on the add i need to first get the data right first on click on this content and click on add i have to first get the data whatever data i am entering the text box and get the data that is the first part then we'll go and discuss about binding part okay now and let's back to the to do part we have to do ts file here and you can see that something is written here ng on it ignore as of now we'll discuss that life cycle path later and implement something there written forget about this thing let's go and focus on the html part today we're going to focus on the html part tomorrow we'll go and start the coding on this individual stuff okay now now guys now i have a i have a text box right i have a text box i want to access this text box value now suppose whatever i will enter here that value i should have to get okay now let's on run learn about the data binding part okay i understand data binding part what i'll do is let me define one variable i'll define a variable and that variable is going to store the value of the text box because same way suppose when you're writing a uh, class suppose you want to store any value you have to define a variable right what i'll do here i'll define one variable and that variable is going to store the value of the text box simple one now let me define a variable so for variable name is suppose task name for example task name and you know to define guys to define a variable here i am not using let why i am not using let just understand one part here because in inside a class you cannot use the let and const you can only define a normal member variable member value doesn't contain any kind of let and cost in the javascript just a variable name by default it's a let only okay string equal to blank i what i'm saying here i'm saying define a variable which is store the task name simple one means this task name whatever i will going to enter here that going to store inside this task name. okay now clear now guys the things will be if i go to do component means this input where it's going to change that time only we are going to get the value right now then what will what will do we'll go again we will handle the change event here when typing key press event going to type it then again get the value bind the value do lot of things instead of doing all these things there is a concept called data binding what data binding let me tell you what i'll do i'll go to this form module app module i'll add another module called form module guys to enable to work with any forms from this data then we are using the form modules okay this is the predefined modules is given by the angular to work the form modules now let's go we'll discuss all these thing modules how to create your own modules i will discuss all this in later but just understand this way now guys what i'll do when anything getting changed here right i need to capture the data that is the most important part then only i can because on then unless if i don't get this text box value then how i can go and do that how i can go and perform the operation okay now first we'll go and access the value now you know that this to do value is we need to store inside the task name then guys what i'll do here i'll create a function called ng model okay understand i know that it looks like a little bit complicated but first we'll go understand one by one what is this ng model guys ng model is a predefined attribute or predefined property is given by the angular which is used to bind the data to a variable means if i bind 
the ng module to the input and what happen if any time the value is going to change here that value is going to bind to a variable means i am saying that for this input this is my model this is my model means if i change anything the value of this input is going to add the task name means if i want to display the task name value i'll show you later but understand this ng model one if i going to say now no okay ng model is a attribute which is used to bind the data of input inside a variable means when i will go and enter some value here that value is going to store inside this task name variable now you will ask me how i know that task name is going to store it no let let print that variable okay whatever value we are going to enter here let go and print that variable guys now you know that the task name is a variable task name is a variable right now this task name it's a dynamic variable means it's a it's coming dynamically to display any data dynamically we have to use the to curly bracket understand in angular to display or bind any dynamic data inside the html then you have to use the tool curly bracket it is called the property binding okay that is called a data binding in this case what will do what will do you have to pass which variable you need to bind because i am to pass the task name variable i am to bind means when the value getting change here automatical data going to display here means this two curly bracket is used to bind the data or display the data in html guys let me go and run enter suppose let me enter here angular you can see guys when i enter the angular here the data is going to change in that place got it means this is the simplest way you can go and bind a data inside this guys use of this curly bracket round bracket i will discuss later but don't uh, everything whatever i am saying will discuss later there is a use case for that we have to first understand the use case then only we will be able to understand this curly bracket round bracket concept but you have to know that this is, this is the syntax which is used to bind the data to a variable okay now i think you will understand this curly bracket curly bracket is used to curly bracket is used to bind the data it may be any data it may be variable it may be object anything you can going to bind into your html it is called the data binding now what happening in this data binding if i go and change what happening if i go and change this data this whatever i will enter here right this data is going to store inside the task name and due to the task name is getting store the value and if i go and put the curly bracket in the task name it's going to display the data here this is the way we can go and create the data binding operator now let's go discuss other part now you got it data binding what is two data binding i'll be able to understand this part later if you able to understand these two concept then we will understand what is two data binding now guys now i hope you will understand how to access a data of a text box guys right? this is just a one step we are going to learn n number of steps to access a data but as of now just understand this is a text box and we are able to access the data is a task name now that is okay the variable contain the data now what will do this task name is going to store the whatever data will be enter that is going to store inside the task name what our objective is if you go to our initial stage you know that on click of the button we need to get the value then only going to add the list right now understand these things understand these things how we can go and add the how we can go and click the button that is called add on click of this button only we are going to display we are going to access this value now guys in the javascript in the in the angular to add means you are going to click the button you know the click the button is called event right a, suppose event means suppose i am to click the i am typing here it's also event click a button also event mouse over also event uh, screen uh, like um, small and maximize it's also event 
lot of thing it's a everything is a event you can see each and everything whatever doing inside the browser is all are one 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 events right now let's go and understand now let's go and understand how to do that event inside the application means okay means when i click on the button i want to access this value inside my code okay now let's go and click the button guys to click to handle to get a function click function we have to write this code called click so add a function button click you have to know that we have a round bracket round bracket is used for the event understand this part don't forget when i am using the round bracket you have to first understand that round bracket is for the event but button event now guys you know that click means and get, get the access the data in this case click means i have to call a function because when a button click that time only i have to do something right means based on a request something is happening in that case you want to do some function let me suppose function add suppose add task is the function name the add task is add add task okay now when i click the button that time i want to call the add task function understand this way when i click the button that time i want to call the add task function where the add task function contain the add task function contain inside this code got it guys how it's working means i have a button the function is click on a click of this point button i want to go for call the add task this add task is a function now it's our place we can do everything inside that let's go and display the value guys now same way in the java and c sharp you want to display something in the console browser or any output you are writing system.out.println right and in .net you are writing console.write line means these two are used to display the data in the console same way guys if you want to display any data in the browser console then you have to use the syntax called console it is called console console dot log is used to display the data inside the browser log where to display i'll tell you now what need to display here we will display this dot task name what is guys stand for this you already know that in programming language this is stands for current object right now this is belongs to this class instance now this dot task name means i want to access this task name but i know that in the java no need to use this if you are using this also that is okay if you don't use this also you are able to access a variable and a function but in javascript if you want to access any variable or any function of a class level like class member variable and function then you have to use this this variable now got it guys what i am doing i am i have a text box i have a button on click of this button i want to show the data where to show the data so data i want to display the console where the console i'll tell you guys okay, this syntax same as system dot out dot println okay and same as the dot net console dot sorry uh, console dot write line okay these are the two functions same as our java and c sharp to the our javascript console log now where need to display the log let's go and do things now guys let me enter suppose one two three four i click on add i am to display log right nothing where displaying the log for that reason go to right click and click on inspect if you go to inspect you can see that you have n number of tab available here first is the element tab which is going to store all the which is going to display all the html element but other one is called console tab if you guys go to the console one you can see that when you click on console if you click on add you can able to see that i can able to see one two one two one two suppose let me call as suppose task one task one if you can add you can able to see that this is a task one right now we easily know that how to define a in then how to button click how to access a data and console.log is used to display the data in browser console to access a console you have to go for right click inspect and click on the console it's going to display the console right now our objective is completed means now whatever data we are going to add 
that data going to be displayed inside our browser right now second part is after adding this add guys we are not going to fully cover whatever it means in ng model we are not going to do because you can see that we have written um tag task size max is 100 character we can only all characters text box name is required all these things we are going to do tomorrow because this validation required you have to learn new stuff to do the validation but let's go and do all this stuff okay now now once click on this add you want to display the data here now guys understand two things you have to understand first here first is we have totally two different component one is the uh, understand to do is our primary component inside this to do we have adding to do add and to do list and to do add is happening inside the, here list is little different if you see the syntax you will find that okay you will find that this is a to do list and this is a to do add these two are totally different 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 component means whatever i will add it here the same code is going to the same data we need to pass from this component to this component understand this guys when i will go the to do add is doing all the add work understand it's the add work means when i add it here i need to pass this task name from this component to from this component then only i can able to then only i can able to add the item inside this list right this is the basic principle we have to do but the problem is here to do if this is the one component then i can do that right if if, if the to do and add happening uh, like ha, like having the same ui structure then i can i can get the task name i can simple add into the list but due to this two are different 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 component then how i can pass from this component to this component means from add component to list component guys this is the main concept we have to first learn this concept is called component communication this is called component communication means how we can communicate between two component okay i hope you will understand the basic stuff of like how we are accessing the data and how you can display that okay okay now you understood our problem right the problem is like this add one and the list one is two different different component and the problem is when going to add this one here the same time we are going to send the data to the list now how we can go and send the data from this list to here this is our requirement right now now guys now let's understand the component communication now how if you have a multiple component how we can communicate from one component to another component right now if you see these two component first you have to understand the relationship between the two component now you can see that i have Two things to here the to do add component and list component these two are the separate component but this separate component is added inside the one component that is called the to do component just just look into this flow add and to do these two are different but this add and list is adding inside the to do right you can see that inside this to do this add and this list are but these two are the two different different component i can say that inside this to do this add component and list component is a child got it means to do is a parent component inside this to do add and list is a child component that is okay right because inside the to do you are adding these two component means in this case this is a parent component and this is a child component example suppose we have a function okay same example 
we have a function and inside a function i am calling another function suppose calling function x and call of function y i can say that footer is the parent function inside the function i have two sub function this function i can call as a child function okay same way inside the to do due to i am adding this add and list is two different different component i'll say that this is the parent one this is the child one now what need to do i have to pass the data from this component means child component to parent component again from this parent component to i want to pass the data to this list component means flow will be like this way if i draw this the, draw these things you will be able to understand this part okay let me draw we have this is called the to do component okay this is called the to do component to do component inside to do component we have a two again component what is that component one component is called as the one component is called our add component right this is our add component now another component is called our list component to understand this flow then you are able to understand what the how data is going to flow now all the operations i am doing and again what will happen when I click on the button then what i will do guys i will send the data from add to i will send data from add to to do then again the same data just a second i will pass the add to to do again the data need to pass to do to list understand this flow then only i can able to get the data means whatever i going to add that data i will pass to the to do component then again from to do component i will pass the list component means first one from this parent to from what will do initially i will pass data from child to parent then will pass data parent to child there are two communication if i say to do component is a parent to do component is a parent then i'll say that first i'll do from add which is child okay from child to parent parent is to do right after that what i'll do whatever that i'll receive then i'll pass parent which is to do to child that is called the list i got it is the flow means from we have to go from add to parent add to child add to to do to do to list in different way i'll pass the data from parent this child to parent again from parent to child this is called the component communication guys component communication is the most of the important part of our component okay sir can we pass the data directly to add to list no i i'll, I'll go in there understand these things understand these things if i go and write the code here okay let me go to our function here i i'll define one function okay just simple function now what i'll do i'll define function call suppose here to do example this is our to do component okay to do component i have two different different component called function called add component and i'll call another function called suppose list component understand forgot about these things these are the two components now in to do component i am using add component okay, i am using add component inside the function also i am using the list component means by default they are render okay 
Now suppose after the add component, I am getting the value called var x. Suppose var a task name. Now this task name I want to pass to the list component, right? This is the things we have to do. This is the thing actually I am doing, but the things will be this is not a component organized way, but this is just a way. But what I'll do in add component, guys, imagine this add component only gives the data when I click the click here means the data coming from this function is dynamically then only I can pass this data this function until and unless I did not call this function now I can pass the data just imagine that way means this task name will call when I click the button it's not going to call every time it's going to click the button that time it's going to come then only I can pass the data but the data is going to change based on the each and every click maybe your data going to be changed right now first thing is that we cannot pass this data directly we have two function calling now when the data is going to receive that data is going to pass this function okay because data is coming dynamically data is not statically it's event driven means when I going to click it here then only I going to pass the data then what I'll go suppose after the R component suppose I am performing the click event now after click event I will get the task name after the get task name pass this task name to parent what is the parent this to do means guys if you're going to do this this is the function it to do component I have to click the event get the task name pass this task to parent means I have to pass the task to the parent that's the dynamic event how to pass the different stuff is going to pass the event after the pass it now receive the task name pass this task name to list means I have to store a variable that variable is going to store the value then I have to pass it okay I have to pass when task name received bind into the list this is a basic flow diagram I know that this is not looks like the way but this is the basic um, I have to click the button pass the data to the parent once the parent receives the data then only we're going to pass the data to the list okay for that reason why I'm saying parent child parent child all the time because you have to understand the this is work that way because this app add and app list is child to this to do component means this is a child and this is also a child but what happening whatever data I receive from this component what are the data I will receive from this component that value I have to pass it here only right this is my uses now let's first go and understand how to pass the data from a child component to parent component means from add component to this parent component to do component then once we receive the data then that data we have to pass from there to here yeah whatever you ask anyhow how can pass because we have to receive the data then this is the data we are going to pass the data here okay now let's go first access the data and pass it here okay now because let's understand once you click the data on click on add we have to check that the data is existed here or not because we have to do some operations for that reason after getting the data we have to do some kind of list operation and that data we are going to display here right now first do the same part what we are going to do let's understand guys if you go to this to do component right sorry if you go to this add component let's first understand what we need to do now I am doing component communication first understand what is component communication component communication means I want to pass the data from this child to parent means I want to send the data guys send data means you out the data right you want to out the data out the data from this component to outer component outside the component for the reason you want to out the data from here to there that's the reason you have to define a output 
at the rate output at that output is used to is used to send the data from this component to outside component now let me tell you this output is used to out the data from this component to outside component understand guys what i'm saying here i'm saying that when i'm saying output means because this task name you are going to out from here right because this is a separate component but this data we required in this component list component but the things will be how you can pass this data from here to here for that reason we have to out this data from this component to outside component once this is outside component we'll capture it and bind it okay now let's understand here the output is the is called as a event understand it's called an event output is called as an event now what event suppose let me create a function called uh, output name called on add as example on add forgot you can give any name on add now what you guys want to do on click of this button then i want to send the data i want to out the data what into out you need to out this task right then because if i out something and the out should be contain some data right now data is task name now what is the type of this task it's a string type now let me do that new event emitter i understand what is the type of event emitter it's a string type string type okay just string type let to understand this part carefully i told that i want to create a output what output guys i will say that on click of this button i want to out some data to out some data we have to use the other data output and the name of the what you want to out the value is different but you can define n number of out inside a component right then you have to define a function define a variable called on add means when someone going to click on the button that time on add going to be fire where output is used for the define a event but to send the data we have to use the event emitter we have to use the event emitter event emitter is a predefined class in angular which is used to send the data to the we're going to broadcast the data we're going to send the data guys don't confuse between output and event emitter output is a tag which is used to i'll tell you output is used to define out the data from one component to another component but this output is going to send the data via event emitter event emitter i think from name you are able to understand which is emit the event emit means we're going to send the event now i have defined output called on add new event emitter i have defined type here why type because which type of data i am to send if i don't specify type that is fine but i'm say, saying that i am going to event the i am to send the data as a string type and you know that this less than and greater than you people already, already know that this is a generic class okay if you don't know generic class i will explain this class later but if you know that is old and good but otherwise ignore as of now like the generic class you know that you can pass a type as dynamic that is called a generic one generic template right now i have defined output now on a click of this button i have to because this is i have declare but i have to send right i have to send the data to send the data what i'll do i'll go this dot on add dot emit emit is used to send the data emit what you need to emit i have to emit this dot task name means i am saying that on click of our task i need to emit the data what data i have to emit i have to emit the task name guys i have enabled the add here but the things is here after you add okay this is the this is the code right after you add now you have to handle suppose you are a function now just imagine this is a function called add function on add function once you create on add function actually okay but this on add function must have to handle right you have to call the function then it will going to execute for that reason we have to first call this function guys call this function if you remember we are using the square bracket 
square bracket you know that why we are using to handle an event that's the reason i'm saying that i'm creating a custom event that is called on add and which is going to fire when someone going to click on the button just imagine that way this button click but i am firing another event that is called on add like you know for each and every um, like event we have to create a function let me go and write a function called handle add okay handle add now this handle add i have to pass here understand this what how this is happening now just imagine the flow in in to do component i have create a function called on add and i am emitting the data it's going to emit but when sending the data someone is there to receive the data right receive the data we are adding here the on add as an event now, this is called the event how we are doing the click event same as i am creating my own event called on add event in on add event i am creating a function called handle add which is going to handle the add let me go and write here console dot log suppose um, uh, add click clicked okay now save will understand the things you can see the if i go to console if i click on something and click on add you can see that guys we are able to see add click add click you can see that but the problem is where is the data because whatever data we are passing the task name here that should be will receive here right otherwise how are we going to access the data must we have to access the data now how we can access this task name in this function now as a parameter go here guys in angular there is a predefined keyword is available which is used for access the event data that is called the dollar event okay this is called dollar event means dollar event is the predefined keyword which is used to access the event argument what is event argument you can see that in this function my argument is task this task should be stored inside this dollar event it's a predefined keyword predefined variable exists in, uh, uh, like in angular which is used to access the event data means when i click this when i send this task name this task name is going to store inside the dollar under dollar event and to access this one let me create a variable suppose task name it's called string type and I, I can able to see the task name here I'm able to task name here right let me go and save it i can see that it's if i go and types one two three four, one thing you can add you can able to see where is happening is happening in compo to do component see the flow how you can got it you have emit here output is used to create a custom event also also output okay same way i have to define a custom event that is called on add which is to define a custom events we have to define the output then the type is event emitter we are going to pass string data on click of button we are going to emit the data right once we emit the data now once we emit we have to handle the data right to handle the data we have to create a function that function is i am going to use on add this add i am this add is here i am handling the on add here guys it's just a function callback we are calling a function we are emitting a function handling a function okay now handle add now handle add is creating another variable called dollar event dollar event is the predefined variable in the angular which is used to access the event argument what is event argument you are passing here the task name you can pass anything whatever you are passing here this data is going to handle by this event argument this is called a dollar event now you can know that our access that you can define a variable and that variable is going to access here got it we are going to access here now this is the way you can communication between a child to parent uh, Ranjan, a, uh, yeah. I want to know about dot emit function. You are right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah no no this part i will discuss later because this is the life cycle of the angular all these things i will discuss but let's first do all these things after we completion of this basic input output i'll go to this explain about the on init what is ng changes all these things i'll discuss okay this is the there no issue i'll discuss everything okay uh, no no i my question is from uh, dot in emit function jo aapne abhi uh, एड uh, करने के लिए लगाया लास्ट में कंस्ट्रक्शन के नीचे या नहीं uh, उसमें टू डू कंपोनेंट में लगाया थिंक सो ये इवेंट ये दिस वन और दिस वन नो 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 गो अनदर गो डाउन टीएस दिस 27 लाइन ऑन दैट पेज 27 लाइन यस एमिट वन ओके ओके Yes. Okay, okay. Admit. Okay, let me understand this part. Okay, thank you. Okay, what I'm saying here, like I have defined an event. Okay, the event is called on add. Okay, the type is output. Now, new event emitter. I'm saying that it's a event emitter. Guys, right? understand what is event emitter. Let's first understand this part, event emitter. Then you will able to understand the part. Draw something. guys suppose you have button here okay you have button this is called suppose click me okay, this is there and you have a function here okay so function called handle click just example just imagine on this click i want to call this function means if i go and click it here then only this function going to call guys all remember function event event means what it's a action action is always going to perform by a function only because you are click you are mouse over you are doing anything it's a function it's a calling a method or it's a, you are doing an operation that is going to call a function right now you can see that on a click of the click me i'm going to call this function you already know this principle but what i am doing here i am creating my own event one event means you know that button contain the click event that is well and good but the thing is here what i am doing to say that on click of this button i want to check anything and click on button i want to send this data from this component to out component to send the data from one component to outside this component then we have to use the output right output and i have defined the name is on on add now the output is the type of event emitter because i am emitting the data means guys i have this i have this control until and unless if i don't click here this function is not going to call you already know that if i don't click a button then it's not going to call means if i click this button then i will say it's got clicked right means you are broadcasting something or you are saying something that okay i have clicked same thing i am doing here when i want to say my out my function is got click my event is got fire then only you have to add the emit emit is used to emit is used to fire the event Understand what is fire the event? If you go to the button, if you go to the button, guys, someone is there who return the click event. How they know that click event is there? Means someone is there in the back end. They return that when when user go and click on the mouse on the click. That time I have to fire the click event. The firing part, the firing part is done by the emit event. Emit function is used to fire the event. And once you fire the event. that time you have to this function going to be called understand this part this is the declaration this is the execution i have declare i have create a event but the this event not going to fire all the time right when you require that time is going to fire that is the fire a event we have to use the emit means emit is used to fire the event always remember emit is used to fire the event that's the reason i am saying that on add emit emit i have passed the function name now whatever value i am passing here that going to be broadcast broadcast means going to send 
whoever is going to receive the data who is receiver this is the handle ad is going to add it if i remove this code guys then what happen i fire but no one is here to handle the event same as if i have a button and i am not handling the click event what will happen guys if i click the button also if i click the button also nothing going to happen right because i am not handling the handling the event same as guys when you are writing any when writing any event you have to handle that event if you don't handle if it is fire also no one is here to capture that fire that's the reason we have to to fire we have to use the emit to handle this one we have to use a this thing if you guys look into this closely these two things you can see that we are just creating the event inside a component if you if you think app to do is a button just imagine app to do is a button you know that button contain a click event you are all you know that button called a click event but how the button knows it's contain a click event someone is written right inside the button back, background code when someone click that time it's going to fire the same thing i am doing i am creating my own fun own event that is called on ad you can create own on from any function up to you it's up to you whatever like the event you can define just imagine button as a to do app instead of a click i am using on add on add calling the function click also i'm calling function but here i am not accessing any parameter but here i am accessing some parameter to access a parameter there is a predefined variable called the event which is used to access the parameter of the event got it now this is the way we have to communication between a child parent to a child to a parent component this is the one communication now now let's go to the next part guys we have received the value where received the value we have received the value here right because handling or accessing value that's the reason i'm saying we cannot access direct the value we cannot access direct the value here we have to go via medium the medium is the parent component now now let me create a variable called uh, again the task name okay task name the type is string default is blank now guys when i am receiving the task name i want to store this value inside the this task name equal to task name don't confuse the task name let me the t name t name i define a variable called task name and this is called a task name now whatever the when it button click on add we are going to store inside the task name right now now guys what the next step next step is that we have to pass this task name to this component then only you will to see the data right now you see this example we are receiving the data from this component now the things you do we have to pass the data to this component two things you have to understand here we are receiving the data here we, are, we have to send the data means receive the data we are sending the data we have to receive the data now let's go into here and print the task name okay we're going to print the task name let's save it now guys sorry Just one thing. okay now suppose i will go enter row to three and click on add you can able to see that this is displaying here okay this is displaying here but where is displaying it displaying inside the to do component right this is our suppose task name okay you can see that suppose if i go enter two three four you can get task name two three four now this data we have to pass this list component okay now how we can pass the data that is the examples now which is the last thing we have to learn today because we'll spend lots more time today now only learn how to pass the data to this component guys to send the data from component to outside component we are using what we are using the output right output is used to send the data from child to parent means you are defining any event you are defining the output but when you're going to receive the data that time you have to use what you have to use the input understand this part guys you have to use the input what is input understand 
output when you send the data input means we required to transfer the data from this parent to child got it we're going to transfer the data from this parent to child then this list is accepting the data so this add is output the data or send the data when you are sending the data we are going to use the output okay we are going to use the output when you receive the data i mean data is, data is going to be in that is called the input the data input i think you're able to understand this input and output one is input the data another one is output the data clear now let's go understand how to access the data to access the data let me understand input is there right input let me define suppose called task and it's called a string type let me define it as blank by default is blank there is no nothing data is there means input is used to define the input attribute input attribute of the component right sorry input output of the component okay now let's go and what we'll do we'll print this task into our ui go to this um, because this is a variable right we'll go to our html file and simply go and list you have to pass the task okay got it now guys now what we'll do let's go to the to do component on click up now we have to pass the data what need to pass we have to pass this task name what is the task name this task name store when we are going to add the button going to store the task name now this task name we are going to pass into this component now guys as i told if you go around bracket it's a event to send the data we are using the square bracket square bracket means it's a task now what task you have? We have a task name. See this one. We are using square bracket as a property. I'll I'll understand. I, I'll explain this property a little bit more. But understand, I have defined a property. What is this task, guys? This task is a, this input. Got it? And this input I am passing the task name. If I save here now, and if I go to this UI, suppose let me add it called suppose one two three four. You can add. You can see that it is playing here also displaying here also but if you see this component this component is belongs to app to do list right it's belong to app to do list now what will happen if i go and add anything here and i click on add you can able to see that this data going to be changed and this is called the input okay now guys understand why this input and output is required as i told from earlier stage we are just creating what we are just creating a html our own component means if you know that guys if you know that if you know the input type you know input type also contain the type attribute right type attribute stands for the support text have you ever imagine how what is this called this is called the attribute guys the same thing we are designing here in the app to do we are designing our own custom attribute to define your own custom attribute, you have to use the input. The same way, if I go to the HTML and I have a button here, right? I have a button here and you know that button contains the click event. Okay, button on the click event. This click event is same as inside our, this add one is called output. Got it? Means the, if you compare between a component to a HTML syntax, you will find everything is the same. But in code to handle the Angular, to handle the button, handle the event, we are using the round bracket. To pass a data, we are using the square bracket. Round bracket is for uh, event, square bracket is for property. Got it? Guys, this is the core concept of a component. Component only contain this event and attribute. If you see anything, Anything means, guys, if you see any element, all the elements contain only these things, a attribute or a event, nothing else, right? Attribute is there, an event is there. Same thing we are de designing inside our application. Now, guys, this is for today. 
but tomorrow class we are going to discuss much more about the validation like whatever things we are going to discuss that we're going to complete as tomorrow class okay before wind up anyone any questions can feel free to ask me Okay. Yes, 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 yes. That, that's the reason I'm saying, right? That reactive forms, everything going to continue tomorrow. But tomorrow, today we take a little bit more time because the fundamental you have to understand. Once I know that you are able to understand fundamentals, and tomorrow going to implement the reactive forms to do all the validations, everything. Because whatever Sir, I explain, you, yeah. Can you also tell me? I mean, if we uh, click on that button, so. Ex uh, all the data will be repeated, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Means if I click on uh, one, two, three, add one, two, three, something that data should be displayed here as a list, right? That is our original designing. That we are going to do now. Yeah, how to how we are going to do that? But before that also, we have to maintain the state. Where we have to maintain the state? The data is there or not? That uh, one, two, three is already added or not? All these things we are going to focus on today. We are going to organize. Because why we explain this thing, guys? Because when you're creating component, you must have to know that this is the basic principle of a component. Then only we're going to organize the data. Then only we're going to do all the operations. Okay? Because input output we are going to use this input output most of the things inside our application. The data is going to manage only centrally, but the all the operation is going to happen in different 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 places. Okay? Got it? Okay, let's get started. Like uh, yesterday, we have discussed about the component and we have discussed about uh, how to add the data and also discuss how to communication between two component and also discuss about input and output. Okay, now we'll resume our work. Like I'll draw something, let's discuss about the flow, then we'll go and implement that one. Okay. Imagine like uh, we have two uh, in in this to do component. Okay, in the to do component, we have two sub component, right? One is add component, another one is list component, right? Another one is list component. Now, guys, what we'll do now in our case, just a second. In case, what we'll do, this is the add component, right? And this is the list component and this one is the uh, uh, this one is the um, to do component you know that list is going to add the list of item here right now when you click on the add we should whatever you are going to add here that data should be push here right and when in future going to add update delete all this thing going to do all this thing going to be manipulated now let's do the data 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 like centralized of data like when you're going to add in this to do to do one we are going to create a uh, array okay going to array and in this array on click of add we are going to enter the data okay we will push the data push means add the data after adding pass this array to the list once you pass this R to the list, then in this list, we are going to loop the list. Yeah. To the list and display the data. Got it? Means, on click of R, in this to do component, mean parent component, we are going to add the data, whatever the task name we are entering, the data going to enter into this array and pass that array to this component. Then what will happen? In this component, we will go and add all the item here all the item means guys whatever item inside this we'll going to add it okay now let, let me see what are the things we can do that okay now now let's go for this data content guys understand if i will see this data this data means task data then you can see that in this task you are seeing that only one data is there that is called task name right task name is the data whatever going to enter here along with this suppose i want to store the date also i want to store the date also because of what what time you have entered this data okay 
in this case guys how i can store the complex data means if it's a single type single data means only task name then i can create a string of array right i can create a string of array now i have a task name also means task also and date also now it's a complex type for complex type we need a we need a class or we need an interface which is going to store this ta date and task name means we need an object which object is going to store this two attribute if it's a only single task name string array is enough but now i have to store task name as well as the date now i have to create a another model and that model is going to store the task name and the date now first go and create that model okay now guys first understand what is a model i am saying you, you people already know that because you are from different different programming background you know that we are creating the like different different like uh, the class suppose uh, you are retrieving the database data from database suppose you are creating a class inside a class you're defining all the uh, attribute like all the columns from the database and you are just on your uh, like whatever orm you are using binding the data to your class right and this data you are exposed to your api json the same way you are performing all the times now same thing we are going to implement here now what we'll do let me create one folder that is called models okay models like what the models should be contained models should be contain all the classes let me create a new file that is called suppose to do dot model dot ts guys to do model dot ts this is i'm just giving a model class suppose i want to store the task let's what i'll do i'll create a interface guys i'll tell you what is the use of interface now i type export interface i to do okay now i'll i'll write to the all the code then i'll go and explain all these things okay now what i'll do to do let me say suppose task it's a string type and it's a uh, created on it's a string type okay i suppose it's a date type now guys understand i know that suppose if you are java or c sharp programming you know that i know that people already in that background then suppose you have a database suppose you are using any orm suppose jdbc connection or in dotnet you are using the edu.net or this entity framework whatever you are using doesn't matter suppose when you are retrieving the data then from database you are getting from orm then from the orm like any orm you are using then you are creating your poco class like you are creating support class suppose employee class or uh, details class then in th in this class you are creating all the attribute right suppose name address phone number and then from orm you are binding the data to this um, uh, model or uh, whatever class you created then you response this back okay same thing i am doing here what i am doing instead of class because you know that class contain what class contain member variable and member function but in in angular what we are saying that we are using interface for the poco model like what we are doing suppose you want to store any data as a different different object for of different different key format then you can use a interface what is interface like you know that you people already know that the use of interface in angular to define an interface we have to use the interface keyword now just ignore this export i'm going to explain this export now now interface i to do i can give the to do and this interface is going to store two attribute one is a task another one is created on mean task is going to store the task name created on is going to store the created name means when this task is got created okay now now what is the use of this export because every time uh, we have discussed export import let me ex uh, explain this one okay now guys now let me go to this to do In, let me go to to do one and i want to define i want to uh, um, declare a variable i array variable which is going to store all the tasks suppose um items okay i am defining items the items is a what type of items because suppose as i told initially suppose i want to define an array i'll try type let um, names equal to square bracket this is my definition of array in javascript okay same way here if i mention string 
then I will tell that this array is a string type, right? A same to same, what I will do, I will define a variable, that variable name is items, and the type is i to do, understand? The type is i to do, and this is a array type, understand this part, what I am doing here, this symbol is, stands for array, means define a blank array. Guys, what is blank array? Means initially I am saying that my array is a array array size is zero. There is no item exists. It's a blank array. Okay. The same way you, in your program you are defining suppose um, suppose you want to define an array of uh, uh, like this this item. Then what will do? You will do list then list of i to do. Then you are creating object, right? Then later you go on add this one. Just imagine your list to i to do. Then in dynamically, we can go and add the item into the items. Means simply I define a array. The, the value of the array is blank. And this is the dynamic array. Means we can go and add the item here dynamically. Okay. Now, then see that I hope you will understand this part. In this to do, I have defining all the attribute. Now, guys, understand this part. Why I have written here export? And what is the use of this import guys it's a just like a uh, public variable like suppose you are defining any different uh, files and in that files if your um, class is not public or is not like uh, access modifier is not there then you cannot use that class in different class right the same way in the case of this angular and any uh, front-end language suppose you can see that this to do model is a different file okay inside this file we are adding n number of things we can add n number of things in here, here right the meaning of export means you are saying that i am going to export this file outside this file means when you want to when you want to give the access of this particular interface outside this file, I mean inside this file you can use without export. Suppose you want to give the access outside the file, then only you have to give the export. Means export is used to give permission to any declaration which will access outside this file can you understand this part means each just imagine if i give the export here before any declaration it may be interface it may be variable it may be constant anything then guys what will happen then this interface or whatever i will declare here that is going to access outside this file outside the file means if anywhere I, I want to use this one, I can able to use. To use something, then I have to use the import. Example, suppose you, you already know that in Java, we are using the import statement to import a library, import a namespace. In .NET, we are using the using statement, right? You can see that that is the same as here. In to do, I am saying that I am exporting. So just guys, if I don't export this one, you will see that it is throwing an error. It is saying that this is not available. You can see that. It is saying that this is not available. Why is it saying? Because it is not a module. Not module means what? You are not giving permission that this to do is not going to access outside of this file. Only if you make available outside of this file, then you have to mark as export. Once you export, means you are saying that it's going to be available for all the files. You treat this as a export or this you treat this as a module. Then once you export, then you want to use inside your file, inside your other file, then you have to use the import. Import whatever the class interface or anything you want to import, import and the from which file you want to import got it the use of export and import export is enable the declaration to available outside this file and import is used to uh, import that particular declaration inside your um, file or inside your um, whatever the class we are declaring okay then that is the use of import and export you can know that in java we are using import 
so in, including the namespace in .NET, we are using using statement. Same way, suppose if you don't mark this class as suppose you don't mark this class as suppose uh, public, then we cannot go and access this class outside. You just link in that in that way inside this import and export, right? Now, now guys, I have a array. I have an array that is called items array. Now this items is is the I to do. Okay, this is a blank array. Now what I'll do on click off. Okay, on click off this a second. On click off this. Suppose I'll go suppose put task one. Task one. Then click on add. It's going to add the task in this list. This list means in this item. Then we'll pass this items to this list component and list component going to display all the list of tasks okay now guys now here let me remove this, all these things task name okay now in this to do we are getting the task name suppose we are getting here task name okay now this task name we want to push inside the items okay, let me remove this part okay now what i'll do I know that what are the condition okay check duplicate that will do later I'll show what is the change on check duplicate okay now third things second things are the items okay now how to add the items then this dot items guys I, this is used to get the current instance of this class dot items means I'm going to access this items I want to push the task name then you know java in list dynamic list you know you can add and remove right same way i want to add that it is a predefined function available it is called push push is used to push the data now what type of data you want to push i want to push the i to do data i to do type of data what is i to do content i to do content task and creation created on now i have to I will get the task name here but how to get a date, date time then for that reason what i'll do guys i want to insert the object right because i want to insert these two object task two property task and created on and to insert the object as i told to define a prop object we have to use the curly bracket the curly bracket now i have to insert task name is belongs to task name and created on is going to belongs to new date okay it belongs to new date guys what i'm doing in javascript to create a date instance we are getting called a new date now it's going to create a date instance current date instance of the date like in in uh, c sharp you know the data date and time dot now in java I, I i'm not specific what is the things but you can use to get, get the current date you are using the new date in java in javascript to get the new date like the current date you will use the new date okay now every time we will going to push the data it's going to create in it's going to add a new item inside the items let me go after adding this item let me display inside the log the console dot log then items now guys after this one let me save it after this one if i go and run the application if i go to inspect yesterday i told about this console now what i'll do if i click go to add suppose task name i click on add you can see that i'm able to display the items if i click it here you can able to see that it's displaying zero item because we have added one item task name created on this date same way suppose task name two click on add you can see that i have second two item added one is task task and task name have added okay you can see this way right same way i can add n number of item to this list it's going to add the dynamic list okay checking duplicate suppose i i suppose i'm going to add task name add it should not allow but as of now let it allow later we'll go and check the condition for that okay now in this case you find that we are getting the items whatever items we are adding here we are getting the items here and these items this whatever item we are adding that item we should pass to this list component okay we'll pass to this list component then only inside this list component we will display this item okay now 
let's go to the to-do list in to sorry to-do list we can see here we have a input that is a because this is a previous example due to that we are accepting only task here but the things will be here like uh, uh, now we require a list of items then what will guys do let me define a, another input because you want to access the data when you pass the data then you are going to use the input input suppose i will tell items you can give any name but i am giving items the items is i to do why i to do because you are going to pass this item okay now this is going to store the all the task store all the task i hope you will understand this part of what i am doing i am just defining an attribute that is called item and type is i to do okay now guys i hope you all got that now in this to do component in this to do component i have already a items variable right now this items variable i have to pass this i list items means the items equal to items this items is belongs to to do list and this item is our variable means this is our array variable now guys what will happen now every time i will add the item this item is going to display is going to pass to that time automatically this object going to be update now let's see now in this list component suppose this is my items right and these items I want to display inside my UI. If I go to UI in the HTML, I can able to see here <coughs> items. Okay, I am going to see the items. Let me see. If suppose let me add task one. Okay, 